Hello, everyone, and welcome to the South Burlington Development Review Board meeting of June 15th, 2021. My name is Don Philibert. I'm chairman, chairperson of the uh, Development Review Board. And with me tonight are other board members, Dan Albrecht, uh, Stephanie Wyman, Alyssa Eyring, Mark Baer, uh, and Jim Langan. Yeah. Also with us from uh, the city of South Burlington, Marla Keene, development review planner, and Delilah Hall, our zoning administrator. So jumping ahead to the agenda, are there any additions, deletions, or changes to the order of items in the agenda tonight? Seeing none, let's turn to announcements and reminders. And I will turn it over to uh, to uh, Marla, who you have some announcements about uh, appointments to the board, Marla? I do, yes. So um, the city council at their last meeting reappointed both Mark and Stephanie. So congratulations and thank you for your continued commitment to serving the city. There were actually seven candidates, so... Um, it was great to see such interest. The candidate, the new candidate that they selected to join the board is actually an old board member, Frank Kochman, and he will be joining us at our July 6th meeting. That's good news. It'll be good to have um, Frank back, and our thoughts are all with him and his family, their family. Okay, uh, again, thank you for those of you in attendance and watching online. Uh, just so you know, this meeting is being recorded and we would really appreciate it if you're not speaking or participating, if you would mute your phone. And also, unless you're participating or speaking, if you would turn off your uh, camera, because it's really hard to kind of sort out who's talking and, and who's participating and what. So that would be greatly appreciated. Um, anyone who wishes to participate in the hearing should sign the virtual sign-in sheet in the chat box. Uh, this is necessary in order to be considered a participant in the meeting should you ever want to appeal um, a decision in the future. Please indicate that you have a comment by saying your name uh, in the chat box and that you would like to ask a question or be considered a participant. Also, um, in spite of the fact that it's called the chat box, we really would like people to refrain from having back and forth conversations with people in the audience. Uh, it's very distracting for us. It's kind of like being in a live meeting and having people in the audience talking. So if you uh, want to have a conversation with someone else, please take it offline. Also, anyone on the phone that would like to sign in uh, to be considered a participant can send an email to Marla Keen at mkeen at sburl.com. Provide your contact information. You can also submit any comments you have um, in writing. Mute your phone. I've already talked about that. And mute your um, audio. And so next, uh, any other announcements, um, Marla? Yes, so um, we need to talk briefly about the July 6th meeting, which will be the next meeting of the board. Um, <clears throat> that meeting, we have scheduled a formal site visit. This happens very infrequently. This will be the first site visit that has happened in my tenure with the board, um, which has been four years. Um, we will be meeting at the barn on Old Farm Road at 5.30 p.m. Um, we do need a quorum of board members. Again, this is very infrequent, so please make an effort to attend. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will be, um, I'll send out a memo sort of describing what a field visit is, but it's a information gathering visit where board members act as video cameras. They can see things that are pointed out to them. There should be no discussion of anything that's pointed out. And we will appoint a hearing officer, um, a member of staff, it'll either be uh, Paul or Ross, possibly Justin, to kind of keep that process aligned with what's allowable under state law. Um, so we'll meet at 5.30. And then the next thing I need to talk about for the July 6th meeting is 
Because the governor has lifted the state of emergency, we are required to have a physical location for all meetings moving forward. We can still have meetings online, and we will continue to have a hybrid option once we move into the new space at 180 Market Street. However, our current setup at 575 Dorset Street is not well suited for hybrid meetings. So I need the board to decide as a body whether they want to have the July 6th and July 20th meetings in person or online. And then Delilah or I will be the physical location person. But if you all want to continue online for two more meetings, um, and then we'll switch to 180 Market Street in August, that's fine. Or if you want to um, just switch to in-person for the next two, that's also fine. What are folks thinking? Is, um, well, go ahead, Mark. I was, I'm fine with keeping the next two meetings virtual and then just starting clean over at Market Street. What do other folks think? I'm kind of in agreement with Mark. I'm leaning towards the uh, virtual for the next two and then starting at market. Okay. Yeah, I agreed and, and, and hopefully the city, there'll still be the, a virtual option as well going forward as well too. So. Okay. The only thing I would say in favor of going back to in-person for the July 6th meeting is because of the field visit and we will have deliberations, it may be a little less rushed if we just go as, as a body from the field visit to deliberations in person. Um, but you all live very nearby, so <laughs> it's not really a big deal. So but does that cause any of you to change your mind? No, I'm still good with oh. virtual for July 6th and 20th. Okay, so we will go to in-person meetings in August. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Any other uh, announcements, Marla? That is all. Okay. And are there any comments and questions from the public that aren't related to the agenda or items on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move ahead to the first uh, item. I will read that. The first item is um, agenda item number four, miscellaneous application MS2101 of the City of South Burlington Department of Public Works to construct a dog park on the northwest corner of Wheeler Nature Park. The project involves impacts to class three wetland and wetland buffers at 1100 Dorset Park. Who, um, first of all, are there any recusals or disclosures? Um, I just want to disclose that occasionally my company does do work for the city, um, but I don't think that that will affect my ability to be impartial on this project. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Any others? Okay, who is here for the applicant? Justin? Yes. Okay. Good evening. Do you have anyone else here for the applicant? Um, I am uh, Justin Rabideau, the Director of Public Works and the staff liaison to the Dog Park Committee. Okay. There are at least two, it's tough to tell from all the boxes here, but there are at least two and a half committee members present. Um, I'll, they're certainly free to comment, but I'll be leaving the technical discussion on behalf of the city as the applicant. Okay, so um, thank you. I will need to swear you in. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? I do. All right, thank you, Justin. Justin, could you give us a brief overview of the project? Of course, we've all read the staff report, um, but it's always helpful to start out with just a brief overview. And um, this is a miscellaneous application so I, I'm not quite sure what that means, Marla, in terms of the action we need to take. What, how many stages will there be for this application? Sure, um, a miscellaneous is similar to a site plan in, in that it is just one hearing. Um, you can either continue or close the hearing tonight, but it should be voted to be closed. Okay. Okay, good. So Justin, introduce us to your proposal, please. Thank you, uh, and Marla, thank you for putting up the site plan. 
Um, I won't do the long hit, tortured history of South Burlington and dog parks, other to state it is long and torturous, um, which, which gets us to tonight. Almost three years ago to the date, the city council established a dog park committee and the main function of that enabling charge was to identify a location for a new dog park in the city of South Burlington. Um, certainly we would have been speaking to you much sooner if we had not essentially lost the last year um, in, in progress like uh, the, rest, the rest of society in general. What we are presenting tonight is a two and a half plus or minus acre dog park located at the south east corner of Dorset and Swift Street. Uh, it will it is proposed to be access off of the existing parking lot shown in faded gray right off Swift Street. That parking lot is roughly 200 by 80, though it's not uh, its shape is not uniform and it can hold approximately 40 to 45 cars. Um, in, in discussions with the dog park committee, we felt it was very important, as you can see on the site plan, to segregate areas and thus we're proposing a half acre park um, for, I guess, anecdotally small dogs, but the more common nomenclature would be perhaps uh, timid animals and a two acre park for uh, large dogs or dogs that don't mind um, kind of getting getting into it with other dogs. In the, where the two parks meet, where the, where the small and the dog park meet, there's a shaded area right off of the parking lot that will be the gated entry in which, at which point after entering into the dog park, um, you can either head into the small area or the large area that is the only entrance for the public. Um, above this is the Wheeler House uh, that also houses our community gardens. Uh, not a big parking space, and it's a it's a probably a couple hundred feet through what is now the um, the outdoor venue space by the by Wheeler. Also accessing it off the Rec path doesn't make a lot of sense for people arriving in vehicles. So we, we ended up with the primary entrance on the north side of the property. And just to the south side of the property, um, there is a note and a leader for a maintenance gate. And that is where staff will additionally be able to enter into the park to perform uh, any maintenance required within the dog park. Thank this, you, Jess. This, this project, is included in the city's current capital plan as approved uh, by the city council and subsequently uh, its voters. So it's it's a community project and on behalf of the city, uh, we are forwarding this application. Thank you, Justin. I have one question. Is the parking lot the same parking lot that exists now if you're going walking in the nature park? Correct. There are no proposed modifications to the existing parking lot at this time. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's move ahead with the comments from staff. The first one um, is, I'm going to read these because these are short. Staff considers that provided information does not directly address whether in the applicant's professional judgment, the encroachment adversely affects the flood storage capacity of the wetland and that this criterion should be better addressed. So you have, what are your thoughts about that, Justin? Yeah, sure. Um, Certainly, we submitted both our wetland ecologist findings as well as the findings from both the State of Vermont Wetlands Division and the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, our view of this specific finding is the wetland has minimal water storage ability to begin with. Any runoff that arrives essentially flows freely into the channel that leads water kind of around the southeast corner of the lot under the footpath bridge. So if, for those of you, if, if Marla, if you can return to the site plan, if we don't mind hopping around, it might be easy to identify. It's Delilah. Oh, hi, Delilah, thank you. 
Um, I, I know a lot of people use the Wheeler Park also for the natural walking area. Mm -hmm. And if you park in the southeast corner of the existing lot, the way you enter into the natural area is over a wooden footbridge. And that is essentially where the drainage flow runs around this park. And so what we're what we're doing with the dog park, it, thank you very much. What we're doing with the dog park is not going to impact at all. Um, we're not proposing to regrade. Um, it's just, it's an existing natural area that will have to be mowed and kept down. But other than that, we're not proposing to change elevations or do anything that would impact the drainage um, around the southeast corner of this lot. What do board members think about uh, Justin's comments in relation to the staff comment? I, it sounds more like he's familiar with the site, so I, I trust his judgment on that. Okay. I, I guess I, I have a larger question related to parking there in general and but I can say that until you get through all the comments. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, I, would concur. I, would, I would concur with Justin's assessment, especially since there's going to be no regrading and, you know, water can flow through the fence. So I don't think it's going to be changing the, uh, the water course going on okay. there right now. Good. Okay. Moving on. Wait, Don, uh, this is Jim. Don. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, I, I, I guess I do have a concern with this. Uh, I, it feels like there was, there's not really an effort here to avoid the wetland, um, and there's there's quite a bit of space that's not wetland here. Um, and as we, were, we are talking about, you know, an area that's going to be sort of adding, you know, concentrated pet waste to a, a wetland um, with what seems to be. I mean, maybe minimal effort to avoid it. So uh, I do have, you know, some concern with this. I don't know, if, Justin, if you could speak to whether, you know, it's this wetland area would be able to be not totally avoided, but um, looks like there is some quite a bit of high ground here. Yeah. Would you like me to respond to that, Madam Chair? Sure, please do. Yeah, so I, I... I think in general, um, I, I understand Mr. Uh, Langan's comment. We we as a dog park committee and as staff are approaching this site, um, particularly given back to the long tortured history of us getting kicked out of various spaces, including city owned property. Um, we probably only have another bite or two at this dog park apple. Um, so we are trying to get as much room for dog recreation as possible. Um, this isn't a box store. It's not a housing development. It's as, it's as low impact um, as, as you can get for this type of a, a wetland impact. Certainly avoidance. I know where avoidance falls on the mitigation um, hierarchy. But we, we just feel, and I think we, we, we all probably personally know or anecdotally just how much the community, particularly during COVID, was relying on recreation. And we all read all the issues about the demand for space for dogs. So this plan is responsive to what the public is telling us. Um, however, I'm not sitting here saying um, it is impossible or um, I'm gonna fall on a sword if the impacts need to be made smaller for this reason. I'm just presenting to you more of the need side of the equation. Sure. I, I was struck by the comment um, that this is for large dog. I think for large and small dogs, this is actually larger. The area is larger than the bike path down by the lake. I mean, not bike path, um, dog park down by the lake. Um, Jim, did you did you start to say something? Yeah, but you can go ahead. I mean, my my I guess um, my question would be, I guess, Marla, if the, or, or Justin, if you know, if, if, if the Natural Resources Committee is um, 
was asked to, to take a look at this. Yes. Um, I did not specifically reach out on the planning and zoning side, Justin. I don't know if the dog park committee worked with natural resources at all. The dog, the dog park committee is comprised of a number of folks from various city committees, including a member of the natural resources committee. However, we did not formally bring this site plan to the NRC for their review. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. So, um, is there a plan to completely mow the wetland and the buffer area, or is it going to be left somewhat naturalized in those areas? I, I think historically dog parks and the dog do a really good job of you know kind of maintaining lawn growth, if you will. We don't have to, do, and this isn't just us in South Burlington. You know, my my familiarity with the regional dog parks is um, we're happy when we get grass to grow at all. Uh, so I don't see us having a heavy maintenance hand here, Stephanie, in terms of mowing. Um, but certainly we can expect the impact of the pups running around to you know, have that in impact, if you will. Yep. I got a question for Marla. <clears throat> Marla, if the, if, the if the draft natural resources standards that are being considered by the Planning Commission now we're in place, would this still be able to be built? I believe that recreation is one of the allowable uses. I thought that was just for like a discrete walking path, not generic outdoor recreation. Um, if that's the case, yeah, my memory on what the exact regulations are is a little fuzzy. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I, I certainly agree with Justin's point and, and as a as an advocate for our one existing dog park, because it is located near a lot of the people who have apartments, um, I'm glad to see and there's, dog ownership only continues to grow. So I, I understand the need, it just, it does seem odd that We've, we've essentially got, if you just look at the broad rectangle, the hockey rink size, or it looks like a hockey rink from, you know, the, the, the rectangle that we've got half of it on top of a wetland buffer. So it's just, I don't, I'm sure there's a reason why, but I'd like to hear if the, maybe this is a question for the dog park committee members, why there wasn't even from the get go, like, well, there's wetlands here, we should maybe, have it be extend a little bit more to the south and a little bit more to the east, you know, instead of half of the park being wetland. So going, if I may, Madam Chair, um, we don't, we only have about 15 feet to the south until we are sitting on top of the existing use that is the pizza oven and there. So there's not really southerly expansion possibilities. To the east, we quickly get into the nature walking trails and um, kind of our feel of that is um, the less we keep barking dogs away from that use of this property, the better. And the, and then the over, the overarching answer is from my original reply to the similar question of, you know, we're having to fight and claw citywide to find any space yeah. for these uses. So we're coming in um, with this proposal as is. Yeah. If, if the report from our wetlands, our, our certified professional soil scientist indicated um, a higher degree of, of functions and values, we would probably have a, a plan that was more sensitive to that. But as you can see in the packet, that is that is not at least that person's opinion. Yeah, no, I get it. Okay, thanks. Other questions about this issue? Shall we move on? Uh, number two, as noted in the stormwater section above, staff recommends the board require the applicant to demonstrate how the impacts of the proposed project are mitigated by the measures referenced in the criterion. Such mitigation may require modification of the proposed park boundaries. That's kind of more of what we were talking about. Yep. So 
It's, it's almost the same answer as the first question in that runoff from this part of the property um, drains by way of culvert under Swift Street and into the city's ex existing stormwater system where it then heads north to a large detention pond near the interstate overpass. Um, so again, this what we're doing isn't really changing um, the, the flow of stormwater from a pre and post situation. And this is an area that's currently treated via a, um, a, st a state regulated stormwater treatment practice to the north of the site. Board members, any comments or questions or thoughts about this? Jim? Uh, I, I don't have additional questions on the wetland. I, I, I also have a, a parking question, but it sounded like maybe Dan had one as well. Um, I'll just say anecdotally um, that I'm driving a, a kid in there um, around five o'clock on several days a week, and that parking lot is full, and people are parking on the grass now, and it's not a dog and it's not a dog park. Um, so I, I, functionality of um, I mean the, and the, the, the traffic line to, on Swift Street into this location right now is, you know, it's, it's almost, it, it almost gets to Spirit Street at times. Um, so it, this, um, it, may, it may be hard for dog owners to even park at this site unless there's some, some changes, at least, at least at some times of day. Mm -hmm. Um, Justin, was that a consideration when you were doing the planning? Yeah, we, we looked at the, I mean, in general, the, these heavy these heavy use recreation areas during their peak period, they're over parked with or without an additional amenity. And, you know, whether it's one more dog park or one more softball field, right. um, we want to, to the extent possible, take advantage of an existing inventory. If we find we need, uh, to expand parking, we have a little ability to do that directly to the west. Um, we certainly think if we start looking to the east, we'll be running into similar wetland issues. Um, the parking, that parking lot, this faded in gray, is actually attached to the original uh, Dorset Park Act 250 permit. Um, so we're we're just trying to take advantage of existing existing parking, knowing that people might be arriving uh, along the bike path, or they might be coming in from some other area. I don't dispute the fact that during peak periods, um, for any function at Vet Memorial Park, parking is an issue. Any other comments before we move on, or questions? I think I think that's it for staff comments. So um, our option is to vote to close or continue. What is the board's it. pleasure? Don, you should see if anyone in the public wants to speak on this. Thank you, Mark. I meant to do that. <laughs> Always good to have a former chair to enter. Thanks. Are there any members of the public who would like to make comments about this project? Let's see the chat box. Looks like Barb has turned on her microphone. Barb, would you like to provide comments? Yeah, hi, I'm Barbara Service. I'm a resident of South Burlington, and I was the chair of the committee that looked to find this site. I think Justin has done um, an admirable job of talking about the trials that we faced. Um, there isn't another space in South Burlington. Um, we're trying to create something that will hopefully pull dogs um, away from running wild in Red Rocks, where we have great concerns about the natural area there. And this hopefully will begin to address that concern. Um, we looked pretty carefully at the issue of the natural area next to this, and that's one of the reasons the lines are drawn the way they are. And I know I'm repeat, repeating a little bit of what Justin said, but I want to speak as a, a member of the public. Um, 
So I think that we are cognizant of those concerns. We also had the issues around things that had already been done at Wheeler House, and we're trying to be good neighbors, both with, with um, Veterans Park and with Wheeler House and, and with the natural area, and at the same time provide a space that's large enough. The, um, the existing dog park at Farrell is simply not adequate, especially for a large dog. Um, and it's got a number of configurations. There are things that will happen with this dog park. It will have rounded, um, rounded edges instead of sharp corners um, so that dogs can't trap each other. Um, it will have natural amenities and not um, so that Justin has talked about things like using a fallen tree as, a, as an agility thing for a dog instead of putting in another piece of cement. So the area will stay as natural as we can possibly make it. Um, and it will also be a nice thing for expanding the recreation options there at, at Veterans Park. And the, the location is a pretty accessible one and we recognize the parking challenges, but those exist um, anywhere that we look. Um, and certainly they exist, uh, people know when they can and can't go, but we also are looking at um, daytime usage, huge number of dog, increase in the number of dogs during COVID. And we've got people who are working remotely and take a break in the middle of the day to take their dog to the dog park. We've also got people who are retired who will be going during the day when other folks are at work. So I think that um, the committee did a really careful job of trying to find a place. And I think the plan is respectful of um, the natural areas as well as the needs of the community. Thank you for your comments and thank you for your hard work on this. Other comments from the public, Linda Kieson. Linda, are you there and would you like to speak? No, I guess she's not there. Is there anyone else who would like to provide public comments on this application? Hearing none. Um, what is your pleasure board? Shall we close or shall we continue? Madam, Madam Chair, I'm in, I'm in favor of, of closing the, the hearing and I thank the committee members for all their work. I'm at a, since we are at a public meeting and on the record, I'm gonna abuse my privilege as a member of the board and ask if Justin can, vi can provide an update on the construction of the upgrades improvements to Feral Park, Feral Dog Park. Okay. Any news or scheduling on that? Justin, are you still with us? Yeah, there you go. I, I am. Are we doing off topic public works 101 here? <laughs> Be happy to answer any and all questions at your pleasure. Well, I just wonder if you had an update on uh, feral, could, feral improvements and then what's the hypothetical schedule assuming approval of, of this project. So you can answer so both questions. Feral improvements remain ongoing. Um, no matter how, how much we lower the fence, someone seems to find and own a smaller dog that can somehow get under a fence as we were faced with this week. Um, that is not a joke. Um, so those efforts remain ongoing. Um, okay. th this fence will be, uh, obviously we have not contacted any contractors and procured bids because that would be jumping ahead of any process. So it would just be subject to the availability of contractor services, primarily for fences. And just a quick note on the fence, the fence that we're proposing is almost identical to the fence that surrounds the stormwater pond in front of Butler Farms, uh, the southerly part of Butler Farms. So it's a natural wooden fence. Um, it has a black mesh in between the cross members, but from 30 plus feet away, all you can see is a natural wood. So okay. uh, we're, we're you know, and to, to, try to, to try to be sensitive to not wanting to see just another chain. Uh, but if we can get that installed van and I really haven't heard um, about fencing contractors. So I know pretty much everyone else in the, in the industry seems to be backed up these days, um, but we'll do our best. We'll, we'll do our best to get it constructed as soon as we can. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the board? Uh, Barb, go ahead. 
I'm sorry, I, I'm not used to these deliberations. Um, if can you explain for those of us who don't know? I've only, I've been to the DRB a few times, but your language is um, foreign to me. Um, what if you close this? Then what happens? So if we close the hearing, we're done taking testimony. And then the board will deliberate and issue a, a decision. Is that correct, Marla? Yes, I would just note that the board, unlike city council, the board deliberates in private. That, that's okay, but can you can you give us some sort of a time frame about how long that takes? So the maximum amount of time the board has under state law to issue a decision is 45 days. We always try to do better than that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, would someone like to make a motion? Was that Dan that made a motion? Well, he kind of came I'm, close. I don't, I don't have the, the number in front of me, but I can, staff can fill, I make, make a motion to um, close the hearing for, I don't have the, yes, the number, miscellaneous number in front of me, but I would make the so motion. I'll second that miscellaneous number. Thank you. I'll, all in favor of closing this hearing, say aye. 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 Chair sure, votes aye. Um, any opposed? No? Okay. Good. Thank you. Let us move on. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, committee members. Thank you, Justin. Um, all right. The next item is a continued, continued final plat application, SD21. 25 of Gem Golf LLC to amend a previously, <clears throat> pardon me, approved plan for an 11 lot residential subdivision. The amendment consists of modifying the tree preservation area for the purpose of changing the stormwater treatment system and updating the tree inventory to reflect existing conditions on Long Drive. Is there anyone, do we have any recusals or, um, um, not disclaimers, um, disclosures. Hi, Don, this is Stephanie. I need to recuse from this one. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, who is here for the applicant? Dave Marshall from Civil Engineering Associates. Okay, thank you, Dave. And you were sworn in at the, the last time we heard this, correct? That is correct. And just for the public, uh, this is a final plat application and that that is the, the final plat is the last step in a, a series of um, application reviews um, before the board deliberates and issues a decision. So we are, um, we've already had a hearing for final plat. This is a continued hearing and I would turn us our attention, if I can find it here on my other screen, to the um, to the staff report and the issues identified in it. Let me see. There are two staff comments. The one relates to um, the uh, requiring the minimum size of new plantings to be 2.5 inches. I have a question about that. Is that the is that the diameter or the circumference, Marla? The our land development regulations define it as the diameter measured six inches above the base of the tree. Okay. Okay. Um. Applicant, what what are your thoughts about that requirement? Uh, that is a requirement and that's acceptable to the applicant. Okay, good. Any comments from the board? Okay, moving on. Um, the next comment is, uh, appears that a number of the proposed new trees are outside of the previously approved tree preservation area. The board should require the applicant to update and expand the tree preservation area to include these new trees, which should be tagged and added to overall inventory of trees to be retained. Applicant, what are your thoughts about your ability to do that? Uh, we concur that that's an appropriate request uh, or requirement of this application. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? 
Well, it strikes me that we are um, at a point where we could uh, entertain a motion to close this uh, final plat. Do Don't forget I... to ask for a public comment. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Are there any comments from the public or questions? Yes, um, hi. Uh, this is Beth Zygman, uh, 338 Golf Course Road. Sure, hi, I am uh, in a budding property to this um, development. Can you hear me okay? You sure can. Great. Um, I have a question, a couple of questions, actually. I, I reviewed this application, and it seems that there's a list of trees here that don't correspond to the 17 trees that are to be planted to compensate for the 17 trees that are going to be removed in order to uh, to construct the drainage swale. I'm just wondering what the um, what the diameters of those trees are going to be because the um, the tree preservation plan on the bottom of page eight does specify that the diameters of the the trees that are used to replace trees that have been destroyed or removed should be equivalent to the diameters of the trees that are removed. Um, in other words, if you remove a tree with a, a diameter of 12 inches, you have to plant one that has a diameter of 12 inches or two trees that have diameters of six inches, for example. So I'm just wondering, um, maybe Marla can answer this, where the, where the two and a half inch diameter um, number came from and why or whether whether the the trees that are going to be planted are, are going to follow the tree preservation plan and if not what's the reason for that um marla do you it seems like a, a good question that the board should probably be aware of do you feel that you can answer that respond to that Sure. This is more um, just probably best addressed by a recap of the last meeting on this subject. So at the last meeting, um, it was discussed by the board that, and agreed to by the board that removing of the removal of the 17 trees supposed to be impacted by the stormwater system um, seemed reasonable if the applicant provided mitigation. Um, and the tree preservation plan outlines um, a specific mitigation that can take place without um, sort of any further review by the board, and that's what Beth refers to um, of the one-to-one. -one the board, under all projects, has the authority to modify a previous approval if the circumstances of that approval have changed. At the previous hearing, the board determined that yes, in fact, the circumstances of that previous approval have because now the applicant is required to install this stormwater system and therefore it is appropriate to modify that specific requirement in the case of the 17 trees to be removed. And I'm not, I'm not making this up. I'm not saying this is in the LDRs. This is sort of the conclusion that the board came to at the previous meeting. Um, and so at the previous meeting, the board said, well, we don't need you to, we don't need you to replace an inch by inch basis. What we need you to do is we need to provide replacement trees in areas that would be um, supportive of the goals of the tree preservation plan. And so prior to this page that Delilah has up right now in the package for the board um, is a letter from CEA explaining their process of determining what trees would be appropriate um, to support the purpose and where they should be. Um, so this is the applicant's proposal in response to the board's direction at the previous. If I could um, respond to that, if I remember correctly, Marla, the board at the last meeting was not familiar with the tree preservation plan. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm just bringing that to their attention at this moment because there are criteria laid out in the tree preservation plan as to you know that speak to the diameter of the trees that are supposed to be um, planted in compensation for trees that are removed. Okay, well, thank you for your comments. The tree preservation plan is part of the record for this project. So if the board has further questions about it, they can discuss it tonight or they can review it as part of their deliberations. Thank you, Marla. Do you have any other comments to to, to contribute tonight? Is it bad? Um, me? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't. Thank you. Okay. I, I just hope the board will consider the fact that that is actually in the tree preservation plan. If they're removing a tree that's, you know, 15, 16 inches in diameter and replacing it with a little sapling, 
um, you know, that takes years to mature um, into the same caliber tree. So um, that's that's what I wanted to bring to your attention. So thank you for the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Um, I, I would remind people to please mute your audio. We are getting some feedback. Um, if you're not if you're not speaking, are there any other members of the public who would make like to make comments about this? Hearing none. Uh, Don, yes. Can I, I'd like to ask uh, the applicant sure. a question. Yeah. So, so Dave, I know at the last meeting, um, I did I did ask you that anything you proposed um, should be reviewed against the tree pet preservation plan. Um, because basically, you know, it, it needs to be defensible. You know, there's common sense, and then there are legal agreements that need to be um, upheld. And I just want you to testify to us, because obviously we will be reviewing it during our deliberations. Do you feel that your proposal still meets the intent and the letter of the tree preservation agreement that was um, put on this project that we will be looking at during deliberations? Um, yes, I do. Uh, I think if, as Marla pointed out, if you can find the time to review one more time the applicant's cover letter uh, with regard to uh, the marching orders that were provided by the board, and again, the intent of this particular tree preservation plan, that the, those particular obligations are being met with this particular proposed planting plan, coupled with the understanding that where the trees are being taken out, there will be, uh, according to the arborist for the project, virtually no change as you look at this particular facility from afar. So there are two goals with regard to this uh, tree preservation plan. One is to maintain the shape of the canopy uh, as one views it from afar in regards to uh, the character on the landscape. And the other is to provide screening to the surrounding homes uh, of the proposed homes within this particular project. So things that we found as part of our recent site walk is that A, things have grown up significantly in the past 17 years, but at the same time, we did find op opportunities to place additional trees to supplement the screening, especially in the northwest corner, to again uh, reinforce the intent of screening uh, associated with the project and the intent of the tree preservation plan. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? So shall we entertain a motion to close the final plat? That would be a cue. Yeah, um, Ron, I will make a motion that we close um, FD 2115 long drive final plat application. Thank you, Mark. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Dan. Um, all in favor of closing um, the final plan application SD 2115, say aye. 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 Opposed? And the hearing is closed. Thank you, Dan, uh, Dave. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item. <clears throat> Site plan application, <clears throat> pardon me, SP21019 of Homes in Shelburne LLC to amend a previously approved PUD consisting of a 36,883 square foot auto sales and service complex and fire station. The amendment consists of expanding the paved vehicle display and storage area by 8,385 square feet at 1301 to 1325 Shelburne Road. Are there any recusals or disclosures? Okay, who is here for the applicant, please? Hi, I'm Joe Wife. I'm with uh, Weidenberg Real Estate Advisors, and I'm representing the um, applicant tonight. Thank you, Joe. Anyone else here with you? Yes, Hi, there is. From Trail Consulting Engineers. I'm here if Joe needs technical help. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we need to swear you in. So would you raise your right hand? Both of you, please, um, do you swear to tell the truth uh, under penalty, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
if you could please give us just a very brief overview of what you're proposing. This is a site plan application and uh, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, sure, yeah, it, our application is pretty simple. Uh, we're proposing to expand the vehicle display and storage area uh, for the dealerships by 8,385 square feet. Uh, there'll be no changes to the existing buildings or access to the site. Um, <clears throat> the expansion area will increase total lot coverage uh, for the PUD uh, from its existing 67.2% up to 70.7%. Uh, I know that uh, staff had a question about whether uh, we had uh, included the concrete block retaining walls in the coverage calculations, and I did check with the engineers. Uh, they are included. Uh, so our proposal is to increase uh, that lot coverage up to the 70.7%, uh, which is 0.7% above the max uh, coverage of 70% allowed in the district. Um, as allowed in section 9.05E of the development regs, uh, uh, we can, we're allowed to exceed the coverage by up to 10% through the purchase of a transferable development right and uh, the applicant is intending uh, to purchase one TDR from a seller in the Southeast Quadrant. And we do have an executed option to purchase agreement for that TDR. And we did submit that uh, to the, um, uh, we did submit that with our application. And our intent is to close on that purchase uh, after we receive approval from the DRB and we'll record all the required uh, legal documents. Thank you. Bob, can I yes. can I get a point of clarification? And I guess that would be to staff, uh, Marla. I, I've never heard this before. Trent TDRs for lock coverage. Yeah, so this is um, new, and I started this um, thinking that it would be there would be no staff comments, and still decided to write it as a comments instead of draft decision, because I just wanted to make sure everyone had an opportunity to understand what this is. So I'm glad you asked. Um, in the urban design overlay, which is largely Shelburne Road and Williston Road, um, mm -hmm. the city council has recently approved an amendment to the LDR, um, and that's the most recent amendment to the LDR, that allows TDR to be purchased to um, increase density in the urban design overlay. So it's of a, um, uh, dipping our toe in the water of allowing TDRs more broadly throughout the city. Okay. Um, and TDRs can be sold from um, properties in the SEQ NRP yeah. at this time. Um, though some changes may, it, depending on how this goes, um, that program may broaden in the future. So if, if one TDR allows you to expand up to 10%, does that mean that this property will have an up to 10% lock coverage bonus on it with the TDR, or is it a one-time use for like this expansion project? It's not quite that one allows you up to 10%. It's that you are allowed to purchase TDRs in order to get up to 10% more. So the okay. max um, one TDR, I'm gonna see how fast I can get to this section of the LDR but one TDR only allows um, 12,000 12, square feet. Joe, do you remember off the top of your head what it is? It allows up to 10,000 square feet. Okay, so if they wanted to go you know, to 10%, they'd have to purchase the appropriate amount of TDRs that represented 10% of the property. Okay, okay. All right. So and, um, if they do go over, if they purchase more TDRs than they need, they can bank them and um, use them later. And that would be okay. the same review process as it is today, um, where if they have them and it's a minor expansion, it could be administrative, but if it's a larger expansion, it would come in front of the DRB. Okay. Um, just, to follow up, just to follow up to Marla, is there, is this, is this policy codified somewhere? Um, and I guess what I'm getting at, it's, it's one thing to allow TDRs for the goal of addressing a critical need such as housing. It's another thing to allow for TDR to increase lot coverage to sell more product. 
Sure. Um, it's I never you get the applicant, the, so is this written down somewhere? Yep, it's in the Urban Design Overlay District. Okay. Good question. Any other questions before we move on to the staff comments? Okay, the first comment is about the retaining walls um, and wanting to um, wanting the board to confirm with the applicant that their provided computations of lot coverage include the retaining walls. Does your computation include the retaining walls? Yes, it does. Okay, good, thank you. Any other questions about that before we move on? Second staff comment is uh, asking the applicant, staff recommends we ask the applicant to provide an estimate for the installed cost of the replacement plantings and bond for that amount as required in 15.15b. 15, 15 15 yeah, the, the our landscape architect at Trudell has estimated that um, the proposed landscaping plan here will cost $6,500. Correct me if I'm wrong, Lucy, but I believe that's the number. That's correct. Okay. So it sounds like we're set on that. Marla? Yep. Okay, good. All right. Um, number three. Staff recommends the board require the applicant to demonstrate that at least eight short-term bicycle parking spaces exist or are proposed to exist prior to closing the hearing. And there's a comment about the requirements. Right. Yeah, we, we did check into the bike uh, rack issue, and what we found is that there is one existing rack on the site that allows parking for two bikes. However, the bike rack does not comply or the type of bike rack does not comply with the regulations. So we are agreeable to a condition of approval that uh, requires, you know, prior to issuance of a zoning permit, the uh, revision uh, to the plan to show uh, complying bike racks that provide, you know, um, at least eight um, spaces for, for bicycles. Great, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I need that to be a specific location in order to write it as a condition. Um, can you describe where that, where you think that would fit? Sure. Well, actually, I'll turn that over to Lucy Thayer, the, the landscape architect. She did make a recommendation on two locations. Lucy, you can grab the drawing tool if you want to draw on this plan. Yeah. Right. And you. this, hi, this is Abby from Trudell. I'm going to actually draw this on. I sent I sent the note over to Joe earlier today. So I think, can I annotate on here? But I have a cursor. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yeah. If you go if you go to drawing tools at the top, and and grab whichever one you want, you'll be able to draw with those. Hmm. I am sorry, I don't see drawing tools. It's at the side for me. It looks like a paintbrush down arrow next to it. Is it on the web the web version? Do I need to be on the desktop version for this? Mm. Should be on either. It's if in the share screen it, it mm. attendees the, the ability to to draw. Do you want to indicate where in the upper right, upper left, or around? And I, I do. So if you look at um, right now where it says bike rack um, on the the Audi bu the building, the Audi building, there's a in the I guess the lower right um, corner, there's a concrete pad with a, a notation that says bike rack. And that's the location where one of them is going to go. It's you know all we need. We're going to do two loops at each location, um, two loops is four bike parking spaces for a total of eight spaces. So the two loop area will be six and a half by seven and a half feet um, on the northern side of that area where it's right where it says bike rack and that, um, gosh, I wish I could find that drawing tool. <laughs> but it's six and a half feet by seven and a half feet and it fits pretty neatly and it's not much bigger than the the um, bike rack uh, illustration symbol. 
The Can you second, tell me if I'm pointing at the right spot? You've circled the right spot with the purple. Oh, there's purple? Oh, sorry. I didn't it's see not, that. Did somebody yeah, see that for me? That. It's, um, Thank right you. Part. Why can't I find where this is? Um, the second place... The second place is in front of the Acura building, the southern piece of the Acura building, where it says existing sales building. And there's a little, there's a small bump out on the southwest corner of that building on the lower right part of the screen. Um, and on the west side of that building, there's a bump out in the front, I guess it would be in the front, near the front entrance of that building. And that would be another six and a half by seven and a half foot. Yep, a little bit north with that blue, that blue right about there is where that would be designated, um, a designated space for two two more of those um, inverted U loops. Good. So, <clears throat> pardon me, does that address concerns board and Marla? Dan? Oh, yeah, Dan, that was a thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Um, so it seems like we're ready to close this hearing. Um, would someone like Any to move? Comment? Public I'm comment. Sorry. What is it about me and public comments? Are there any, thank you. Are there any public comments? Hearing none. Are there, um, would someone like to move that we close this hearing? I'll make a motion that we we'll close. No, wait, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I lost the SP number now. <laughs> That's I make a motion that we close the hearing for this site plan. Okay. Second, anyone? I'll second. Thanks, Mark. All in favor of closing SP 230. 019, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Okay, the hearing is closed. Thank you, Joe and Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next application. Site plan app, pardon me, application SP21021 and conditional use application CU21 uh, 2102 of Tyler Barnes to construct a 6,000 square foot pump track for the purpose of outdoor recreation to the rear of an existing two building commercial complex at 1879 and 1881 Williston Road. And I just want to say it's a really good day if you learn something new. And when I first looked at this, I thought, what on earth is a pump track? But I went online and YouTubed, and now I know what it is. So uh, before we get into the details, are there any members who need to recuse themselves or uh, disclose anything? Well, hearing none, um, who is here for the applicant? Tyler Barnes is here, uh, Madam Chair. Are you, um, can we see you? Are you on the phone or? I'm on, uh, my camera's on, I'm on go to meeting. Yep. Okay. Hello, he's on. It's him. I don't see him, but okay. Um, so we need to, do you have anyone else, anyone else with you who will be testifying? Uh, no ma'am, I do not. Okay, would you raise your right hand please? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Give us a little introduction to your application, please. I'd be happy to. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, a little historical context. Um, my family has been bitten hard by the bicycle bug. Um, it started prior to the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, we had a situation during the pandemic that made it a little difficult for us to fully enjoy their pastime. Um, my son got hit. It, was, it, was, it wasn't a big deal. He's fine. He bounced right back. And uh, candidly, it didn't really affect him at all. But it definitely made my wife and I pause and gave us 
uh, reason to start evaluating where and when we could safely practice, or we were going to allow our kids to safely practice their pastime. Um, that coupled with the fact that we own a, an indoor recreation facility, we own a gym, this is at the, at the uh, property in question. Um, we're spending a lot more time there because we can't afford to uh, maintain uh, as much staff on hand to keep things running uh, for, for obvious reasons. Um, uh, due to COVID, um, we started thinking and reflecting about uh, how we could give them uh, adequate recreation opportunities um, short of, you know, just sitting in the lounge and staring at their iPads uh, while they're there after school or during downtime. And uh, a good friend of mine who engineers these um, pump tracks uh, across the U.S. Um, volunteered to uh, donate some of his time to help us construct one in the spare space that we had out back. So in a nutshell, that's why we're here. Uh, is because this is something that um, we, I would like to afford to my kids and uh, to our staff um, during this difficult time uh, to, to keep them busy, keep them occupied, keep them uh, engaged with a, a healthy passion, uh, passion and a healthy outdoor recreational uh, endeavor, uh, pursuit um, while they have to sit at the gym and watch mom and dad go to work. Um, so, in a nutshell, that, that's what we're trying to accomplish. I will say, full disclosure, since we have had the notice on the door uh, of our intent to for, for this application and, and to go through with this process, we've gotten a number of inquiries, more than I ever thought that we would, uh, from our existing members asking if it would be open for their use. Uh, as per we've outlined in the application, um, that's not our intent. Uh, it, would, it would not be our intent unless that's something that the, uh, the board would be amenable to. Um, but we have a long way to go before we would we could really entertain that candidly. Um, I, I don't have an insurance provider for that um, to fill out for a commercial use. But if that's something the board's open to, it could really help us build our business. I'm not going to lie. Um, so I would, I would be happy to pursue it. Um, I'd be happy to dive more into greater detail as to what a pump track is and what it what it uh, entails, Madam Chair. If that you think that would be helpful for the the committee. Oh, there's a picture. Let me just ask. Thank you, um, Tyler. Do folks on the board want a little introduction to um, pump track pump tracks, or do you feel you know you what they are? I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay, okay. with. It. With it. Without it, Mark, did you say? Sure. Sure. Okay. okay. So I think it sounds anyone need an explanation? Um, so I guess we're good, Tyler. And is this picture, is this a rendering of what you would have up back? Uh, it's, it's approximate. The, the layout would be slightly different, but the composition is, is very similar. So effectively what we'll be looking at is a series of interconnected dirt mounds Right, that are engineered as, in such a fashion that would allow the rider to uh, successfully navigate their bicycle around the dirt mounds without having to pedal by using the momentum of going up and over the mounds and, as in, in, in employing a pumping fashion to circumvent the track. Um, it's the, each each one is slightly different in shape, and it, there's a, there's a, a little bit of an art to it. Um, it's hard to get an exact engineering layout of one without, uh, because candidly, um, most pump track designers kind of go with the flow and, and use the natural terrain that's available to them um, with the understanding, in, particularly in this case, that there are uh, very specific guidelines that we would have to put in place as to what we could do and what we could not do. Um, but generally speaking, this I, I chose this picture because it's representative of what we would plan to do, both in terms of the composition and because aesthetically of the look. Um, it, it would be manufactured, for lack of a better term, out of a, a, different, a number of different types of soil. And we would plan to use um, native plantings, both in between the sections of track and on the perimeter, specifically on the ridges of the track. Uh, both as erosion control and also uh, to further uh, complement the aims of LDR 12.01, which is to keep, leave the areas of uh, within 100 feet of Potash Brook in as natural and in as an undisturbed state as possible. Currently, those 
lands are designated as either parking lot or a picnic area that is uh, it, it's, it's, it consists of mowed grass and maintained landscaping. And so it's our hope that this would help further move us towards the aims of those LDRs. Okay, so it would not be paved. No, no, it's 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 comp it's comprised of dirt. Um, no, now they do they do compact the dirt in such a fashion as to make sure that it doesn't erode over time or that it that it holds up under the elements, but it's not paved. Okay, good. Thank you for that overview. Um, uh, before we dive into the staff comments, does the board have any questions? Yeah, I just have one more question, and I guess. It's an understanding of the use, I guess, and I guess maybe, you know, you provided a very detailed narrative that I didn't read completely through. I just tried to get an understanding of the uh, what your proposal is. But you mentioned that it's you were looking, not looking for an approval for commercial use on it. But so is it just for your use, for your kids' use, like it's your private use? and it'll be, you know, are you fencing it? Is it, how are you gonna prevent people from using it when you're not there? And, or yeah, is it great. for like, you know, all of your, you know, the people who come to the gym, can they use it? So if you can give right. a little narrative understanding on that. Sure, great, great question. It's, it's, it's our intent currently to, uh, for it to be private. And so it'd be for uh, my family's use and our staff's use. Um, during during off hours, so, so it, would, it would not necessarily, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't increase any trip ends to the to the facility or um, really change the nature of what it is that we're doing. Um, we're currently zoned for indoor recreation uh, and a few other uses, um, so we would need a, a conditional use to extend to outdoor recreation. With the board's permission, we'd be happy to, to explore extending that and opening it up and making it more for commercial uh, use, but that's not our intent at this time. Um, how we would prevent other folks from using it, uh, uh, two ways, uh, principally. Um, one, with the way that we would propose to engineer the track, you wouldn't necessarily be able to get enough inertia to make it around the track without um, have, be, having a designated start zone, right? So one section of the track that's built up a little bit higher than the rest is to give you enough of a ramp to drop in, so to speak, to the rest of the track. That would be gated. So you couldn't get into that without, yeah, you could, but it would take some effort. Um, the other, the other measure that we propose to take, and we're, we're open to feedback on it, is and what we have seen done. It, it's, it's very popular with BMX tracks across the country, is to establish two posts uh, on either side of the track um, that are they're cemented into the uh, can be cemented or just you know um, dropped into the ground um, that would allow chain to be strung across them um, during off hours. So effectively, what that would do is. You, even if you were to somehow circumvent the gate and to get into the start track, you would go down and then you have to stop before you hit the chain and then move your bike around and then try and regain momentum again. So it would just effectively for folks who really wanted to pirate the, the course, the juice wouldn't be worth the squeeze. Um, okay. In addition to that, we've, uh, we've as we've outlined the proposal, we propose to put a number of no trespassing signs up and the installation of a or extension of our security system that would involve, um, we've, we've sourced a very low cost, for lack of a better word, uh, term, um, a ring doorbell system that would alert us when folks are on the property and would give us a quick video shot, snapshot and would allow us to have two-way communication with those folks. Um, should someone be on the premises when they're not supposed to be there? Okay. These are all thank great you. questions. Thanks, Mark. And thank um, you for your Can time. I interject a little bit here? Sure. So the board um, approves a use, and it is blind to the success or lack of success of that use. Um, so what Tyler is asking for here is outdoor recreation as a use. Um, and this is very akin to like when we talk about gas stations that want to be renovated and the gas station says, well, you know, um, it's a staying a gas station. And we're like, but it's increasing trips by like 200 trips. And they say, it's still a gas station. There's nothing you can do about it. The inverse holds true here too. Um, you know, the use is the use. And if the board approves it, Tyler can use it as outdoor recreation, 
broadly. Um, so I would encourage, you know, I guess I'm going to take, I'm going to have an opinion. I'm, I know I'm not supposed to have an opinion. I would encourage the board to not include any conditions that require it to remain um, private because, you know, as a city, we would like to see businesses be successful. And I, it's difficult for me to imagine a scenario in which um, a successful, open to, you know, members of the gym, people who are willing to sign a waiver version of this um, is really creating an adverse impact. Um, I do notice that it's in the traffic overlay district. Um, it's in zone C, which has the highest number of trip ends available to it. So there may be some scenario where, um, you know, the board has a condition that says, if you want to open it to the public, um, we would, you would have to come back for a zoning permit and pay your trip ends. But other than that, um, I would really encourage the board to leave this pretty open for Tyler to grow his business as he sees appropriate. Those are helpful comments. Thank you, Marla. Yeah. Thank you, Marla. I would, I would agree with that, Marla. I guess the one question that to Tyler's point, did we have to come back for a conditional use? Or if we don't put any conditions on it, do, is, is he sort of free to operate it as long as he comes in to pay his trip ends? So this is a conditional use hearing now. So if you okay. were use, he has approval for the use. Um, okay. What I would suggest as a condition is that if it were to become public as part of his zoning permits, um, he would have to demonstrate, you know, what, what the increase in trips is and sure. demonstrate that, you know, he, um, A, is under the budget for the state and B, you know, pay the traffic impact fee for those additional trips. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd be supportive of that because I, I think giving the applicant the flexibility to grow his business without our sort of interference as long as he stays within the regs, I, I, I think it's good. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Tyler, are there other others of these in the area? Uh, there are. There are. There's one at uh, Catamount Family Center. Actually, there's two at Catamount Family Center in Williston. There's um, Essex, uh, the town, well, forgive me, I don't know whether Maple Street Park in Essex is city or town or junction. I'm, I've lived here my whole life. I still can't figure it out. Um, but Ma Maple Street Park has one, uh, wherever that is. Um, uh, Cochran's in Richmond has one. It's okay. open to the public. Okay. Um, they're, they're increasingly popular, and uh, it's, it's pointed out in the, in the uh, in, in the brief, they're increasingly being used um, in environmental, environmentally sensitive areas as, as a means for both to help uh, with erosion control and also to give, give folks the opportunity to explore otherwise ecologically sensitive areas um, with minimal impact. Building a trail network through a nature preserve is not always optimal, but having a pump track in a small designated area can give families an opportunity to do something other than just walk on designated paths that, that, that the kids can get excited about. Interesting. There isn't one in South Burlington. Thank you. All right, are we ready to move through the staff comments? The first one relates to um, staff room and board color. Modify the plan to neither be in the right of way nor within the drip zone of existing trees. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Is this, um, is this, I'm sorry, is that addressed to me? I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. So um, if previously yeah. required trees are not present on the site, they must be replaced in the same location with the same species or the applicant must request to amend the site plan to relocate the trees or replace with a different species. Yeah, Madam Chair, if we could move to, I, I completely agree, um, and we were more than happy to comply. Um, we've included two proposals uh, for the, the layout. The one that we're currently looking at on page 21 uh, does not comply because it is in the right, this start ramp would be in the right of way. Uh, the next one does comply. Um, we would propose to move this start ramp uh, what would, uh, over to the left on the screen, which would be approximately, I believe that's southwest. 
Um, so as to move it out of the right of way and out of the drip zone, and then the perimeter of the track would be constructed in such a fashion that it would go around the drip zone of those trees. Okay. And we'd be, excuse me, we'd be happy to modify. Again, it's it's not perfect because the trees are it's it's a uh, it's a moving target, right? Um, this is a little bit of a liquid dynamic, a fluid dynamic. So um, the trees grow each year, but generally, but we would modify the track to make sure that it extends outside of the drip zone. Okay. Any comments or questions? Ask, uh, sure. You say that, make sure I understood correctly. So this one that's shown on the screen, um, I've drawn, unfortunately, the pen that I used came out black, um, but I've drawn the right of way. You have the start box out of the right of way, and then you would be proposing to take what you've drawn as the dashed line around the pump track and just um, spread it out a little bit farther than it's shown so that it's outside the drip zone of those trees. Is that what you said? That's correct. I mean, right now it's there's it would it's pretty it's only really close. Uh, it would appear to the to the tree furthest to the left, and also at the start track the the start ramp itself. Um, that's what those would be the problem areas, but we we would address it with all the problem areas. Okay, I think that um, the second no one of the other staff comments of the stormwater section, um, and it's not highlighted in red, which is why I'm bringing it up now. Um, the stormwater section had um, expressed a preference for the other configuration because it provides a greater buffer between the pump track and the stream. Um, and redevelops the existing gravel parking lot rather than disturbing existing green space. Um, does the, I guess, how does the board want to weight those two considerations? Hmm. I mean, I thought that I kind of was leaning towards the first option as well. Um, just given that it's, it is further away from Potash Brook. Okay. Others, thank you, Stephanie. I'll concur with the civil engineer. Okay, all right. Okay, does that give us what we need to move on? Well, I think you need to provide, yeah. So if you, no, that's okay. Cause we, if you guys are inclined to prefer option one, um, the condition would be to move the start box out of the right of way. Okay. Um, and, you know, and this I, is something I also said in the staff comments, I would really encourage the board to find that, you know, it's an area rather than a specific loop. You know, it should be generally configured as shown in option one with the start box moved out of the, out of the, um, out of the access. But as Tyler said, you know, this is something that's a little bit fluid and will be designed on the fly. Okay. Can I ask a question to to the to, uh, to Marla and to and to the to the uh, to the board? One of the considerations that I that I understood in um, the LDRs was that uh, in addition to the, the we have two two issues with how the lot is currently configured um, that it, that has been grandfathered in. One is the fact that we have a parking lot within 100 square feet or within 100 feet of Potash Brook, and the other is the fact that we have. Um, we have mode maintained yard within 100 feet of Potash Brook. Um, if it, it, being totally transparent, it's, it would be our preference to have option two. Well, selfishly, I don't want to have to mow anymore. I know it's not great for the environment. It's, it's more expensive for our building, and candidly, it's time that I don't have. Um, and by doing option two, um, there would be some initially some some disturbed uh, some uh, we would disturb the green space that would happen but it would then be left in a natural state after that point in time as my question to the board is is that more desirable than just use would that be any would that be advantageous and and more consistent with the aims of what we're trying to get at with the LDRs or should we just go in the gravel lot um, I'm, I'm open to either to either or. I just I'm just I'm asking the question because uh, this is not my wheelhouse. Thank you. What are your thoughts, board? Any any specific thoughts? 
Um, Marla, do you want to weigh in? Um, I would only wait, not on a professional level, but as a as staff, I would weigh in to say that um, I guess this is one of those situations where the board can digest it, digest the question. I think it's a great question from Tyler, and I think there's you know pros and cons to both. Um, so the board has the authority to make the, the final call during deliberations. Um, if you want to let it sink in and think about it and make your decision in the decision room. So we could actually close tonight um, and then take care of this during deliberations. And it doesn't sound like T Tyler can live with either either uh, solution. Yes. OK. All right. Good. Let's, uh, number two comment, where the applicant just move the surface of the right of way. Is that something you're prepared to do, Tyler? Um, uh, candidly, Madam Chair, we're not. Um, and I, and I, Marla, I, I hope I wasn't um, quick in my response uh, that I sent you this, this afternoon. I, that wasn't my intent. But um, as I understand it, uh, the, the right of way is this area that um, we're looking at that says to the right of the screen uh, that says common right of way, volume 88, pages 105 and 360. And there's a little arrow pointing to it. Um, part of that is some confusion on, on my behalf. Yeah, because we've, we've, that, that area has has very recently been paved. In 2016, when we moved in, uh, our neighbor Doug Netty and Fernando Cresta and and I chipped in to repave that section of road, um, and it's in pretty good shape. I took photos of it and submitted them to uh, to Marla uh, this morning. Marla, do you want to pull those up if you don't mind? Because yeah, I mean, this is something I I have no feelings. Don't worry about that. Um, you know what? So I have no feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about feelings. Um, um, but this was a comment from the fire chief, and maybe he misunderstood the location. So if you could walk us through the photos, I think that would be I'm, I'm working on it coming up. Give me a second, because it's coming up slowly on my laptop. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think, Marla, I, and members of the board, I, I, do, I think, candidly, that, that uh, the fire chief misunderstood what we, where we were talking about. So we, we paved, together with my, my neighbor, um, Doug Ned, Netty and, and Fernando Cresta, we paved the entire length of the, the right of way, uh, all the way down to the end of his property. Um, after that, it turns to dirt, it turns to gravel. That is in rough shape. And uh, off to the right of that is the lands behind our property, which are owned by South Burlington Realty Corp, the old Randy Munson Land Trust. I think it's, it's, this is, I, I have no evidence of this, right? But I think they interpreted where the pump track was going as that space, because this is the road right here. And uh, if you can see, this is our red building over here. Please forgive the, the poor landscaping off to the side, but you can see the white truck um, that's parked in our back lot. That's right where we would propose the track to effectively start or very close to it. You can see that it's paved all the way up there hmm. and right to that spot. And it's the roads in, I mean, it's, 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 it's a Vermont road, right? So it's not perfect, but it's in pretty good shape. And it was, it was repaved just, just a few short years ago. And, um, you know, I'm being candid. If it's if it's a if it's a question of having to repave that road, I, I can't afford it. As much as I would love to do that, I just there's no way that I can swing that, especially with construction costs being what they are. I I, I can't I can't swing. Um, and I would I would I would I would hope that I wouldn't need to because I, again, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. But I, that's I will defer to the to the board. Yeah, I mean it. It, it looks fine to me. Um, Marla, board members, do you think there was a misunderstanding? So you don't own the unpaved portion? No, I do not. Okay. Sounds like a misunderstanding. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Marla, does that sound right? That's fine. Yep. I have no permission. Okay. 
let's move on. Num number three, the provided plans indicate an existing approval dumpster to the rear of the building nearest the proposed use. Staff recommends the board require the applicant to demonstrate that the dumpster will remain accessible for pickup, um, yada, yada. Is that acceptable to you, Tyler? Uh, it is. Um, the, what the, in the comments that I that made to Marla this morning, um, we don't use a dumpster. That was, that was a condition of the old use. Um, so oh. we only use uh, small trash bins, similar to what you'd have at a residential, uh, in a residential neighborhood. Um, so that area is, is just, we just use it as storage. So I don't know that that still applies. Um, but if, 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 if that's something that's needed, we'd be happy to, to, to take a look. Um, that was also another reason why I thought that what, what I'd, I'd prefer um, option two on page 22 um, is because it wouldn't change the turnaround at all. So that currently they have no problem getting in and out. There's plenty of space. And um, as a matter of fact, we have to politely remind our neighbors sometimes that receive um, shipments that they cannot use our parking lot, or at least we, we would ask them to kindly give us permission before they bring in a uh, four to two foot tractor trailer truck and they use it to turn around. So there's there's plenty of space for that. But if, if, if there's something that we need to do to demonstrate to the board that, that there's ample space, that we're happy to do it. Can I ask a question? Sure. So where are where does the truck come to pick up your toters today? We wheel it off to the side because we keep the we keep the the totes inside. Off to the side, like. No, in, inside. That's where it is. We keep the totes in inside, and then we just wheel them out to the side of the building. So not where the dumpster location is shown on the plans. Correct. So I'm if sorry, we go back to. We we have we have two totes, so we're recycling uh, and a tr tr a waste tote, and we wheel them out of the building, I around see, to I the side it. of the building, um, so uh, they don't. There's no pickup. I think I have a picture of that. Okay, yeah. Are those and your totes the there? Yeah, that's just for reference. But we we typically bring them over if um, to the side. Uh, no, unfortunately, that's. I mean, yes, but like, if we look from the top view, um, I can I can show you exactly where we bring them. Okay, give me a second. And we have left them there before, and they've come and picked them up with no problems. Let me get to that top view. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, if you look at uh, the our, of our building, the bottom right hand corner. We typically leave them right there. So if you look at the, the portion of the building that's denoted 4130 square feet of Vonda warehouse space, we leave them to, yep, yeah, right there. Okay. Are we good with that, Board and Marla? Yeah, that alleviates any concern I have. Okay, good. Board, any other concerns related to that? All right, one more comment. Uh, number four, staff recommends the board require the applicant to demonstrate that at least three short-term bicycle parking spaces either exist or are proposed to exist prior to closing the hearing. Uh, so we currently have three spaces uh, in front of the building. Um, but what we were proposed to do, Madam Chair, is in the area that we're looking at, um, and I have a photo of that just so, so everyone can see it's not all that pretty or sexy, but um, going back to the uh, the overhead view on, on uh, page 21 or 22, um, we would propose there's a concrete slab that's outside of one of our egresses, and we would pro propose, yeah, so right now if you... Um, yeah, you, that that photo or the uh, that photo will work. So if you look to to the right of these uh, the trash cans, there there's a garage bay door, and you'll see in front of that there's a concrete slab. Um, that slab is just a giant slab, and we'd be more than happy to put in 
as many bike racks as the city would like to have us to put there, that's not a problem. And they would need to conform to the regulations in terms of style, what type? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's and, the current rack that we have. And that does not conform. <laughs> that is okay. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions for Mr. Barnes before we close the hearing or vote to close? Uh, are you taking public as well? Thank you. What is it about that? That is so hard for me. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on this proposed application? Yeah, it's, this is John Wilking. Hey, John. Hi. Uh, when, when you look at the pictures of, uh, of the, uh, hang on a second, let me just get something turned off here. Um, when you look at the, that picture, the building in the back is mm -hmm. mine, yes. 30, 30 Kimball Avenue, mm -hmm. and is a quiet class A minus office building uh, overlooking, well, one, one corner of it is overlooking the site. Um, and so my concern is only one of, of noise and, and uh, traffic. Um, so can Tyler, can you speak to me about uh, what is expected? I understand it, it being fairly private, I expect it to be fairly quiet, but uh, um, I, if it was a playground, it would be a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I completely understand. Um, uh, Ms. And I'm sorry, uh, I'm just trying to find, it's Mr. Wilkins? Yes. Um, do we currently, if, if I may ask, and, and I'm, um, I'm, again, do we currently, I guess, my question is, do we currently, the amount of noise that we currently make, does that, um, does that affect the operations of your building or does that in any way intrude upon the, the, your business? No, sir. Everything's fine. Okay. Then I can, I think I can very confidently say that this would, there would effectively be no change. Um, what we do with the gym, um, we play music loud enough to take the tartar off your teeth in all candor. And we open up those giant bay doors when we do it. Um, and if that, hasn't um, caused any disruption in the operations of your business, I can 100% guarantee you that this will not add any to that. There will be no speakers outside. There will be really no noise. There'll be no shouting. Um, this, these will just be kids recreating in the same way that they do when they attend our, our kids' classes. And we hope we hope we do programming in that back lot. So I, I, I feel very confident in being able to say that um, it should not have, it will not have any impact on your business. But I thank, I thank you for, uh, for the question and for uh, the inquiry. With regard to traffic and trip ends, um, being, being totally honest, if, if uh, I do not, even if we were to open this up to public use, I don't see this as being something, and I would love to be proven wrong. I would love it. I don't see this as something that we could do to drive a lot more traffic to our business. I see this as something as an incremental value driver that we could use for our existing customers. And I see this as being an incremental service that we could offer to our existing customers. I, I, I don't think we're gonna drive a lot more biz, new business to our location. I could be wrong, I could be dead wrong, but I just, I don't see it. Um, and if it is, that is something that I would, that's a good problem to have and I would gladly take up mediation efforts with you somehow in some way, shape or form. Very good, thank you. Thanks, John. Any other members of the public who would like to comment? Okay, hearing none. Shall we move toward closing? This hearing, what is your pleasure? Can, can the chair um, make a mo motion? Uh, I keep asking that. All right, I move right, that uh, uh, plan application SP 21021 be closed. And can the second application is. Uh, Dan, you second that? Yes, ma'am. 
All, all in John, favor? John, quick question. Sure, Mark. Mark. You're, 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 you got a little broken up there. Did you did you put both applications for closure? I'm I'm sorry. Did you put both applications? He has a site plan application and a conditional use application. Oh, I didn't realize those were separate. Do we need to vote separately on those, Marla? You can um, close them both together. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry. I will amend my motion to include closure of conditional use CU2102. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Alyssa. All in favor of closing these two applications, say aye. 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 Opposed? aye. Oh, chair votes aye. Opposed? Okay. They are closed. Thank you, Tyler, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. If I if I may ask, um, and I please forgive my ignorance. Um, what does this? What does that mean? What happens now? So the board has up to 45 days to issue a decision. Um, they typically act much faster than that. Once the decision is issued, there is a 30-day appeal period after which you can get your zoning permit. Um, you, we can talk offline about potentially waiving your appeal period, but you'd have to get the signature of all people who participated in the meeting. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next application is site plan application SP21020 of Burlington International Airport to install landscaping at the northeast corner of the intersection on Williston Road and Airport Drive in accordance with the and I oh a, approved overall landscaping plan at 1200 Airport Drive. Any recusals or disclosures? Hey, Don, this is Stephanie. I need to recuse from this project. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Any others? Okay, here, who is here for the applicant? We have a team of people. Uh, this is Larry Lackey, Director of Engineering and Environmental Compliance at the airport. And hi, Larry. Hi. Hello. Uh, Carolyn Urban with Wagner Hodson Landscape Architecture. Hi, Carolyn. I'm Keith Wagner from Wagner Hodson Landscape Architecture. Okay, anyone else? And I'm Jackie DeJess with EIV Technical Services. Okay. And Is that Stu, Moncrief, uh, Stu Moncrief with uh, Jacobs Engineering Group. Okay, that's it? That's it. Okay. That's I'm, it. Gonna swear, I'm gonna swear you all in. If you all would raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, why don't you give us a brief, very brief, overview of your project? Um, okay. Uh, this is Larry. Uh, we'll give you a brief overview, but we'll be a team approach like we have in the past. Um, and I'll be very quick because I believe most people understand the or know the history here. Back in 2018-19, and as continues today, the airport has multiple applications before the board. Um, it became obvious that there had always been a challenge with respect to meeting the landscaping requirements uh, for cost and, and, and supply for those different developments. Uh, so. Uh, in late 2019 to 2020, the airport took on a very large project of developing an overall landscaping plan from Williston Road down Airport Drive, Airport Parkway, and Kirby. Um, so with that, we um, got the Airbnb approval in June in 2020. And then um, because of the, then there was a, an application uh, from the hotel that required the use of some of that landscaping plan to uh, devote some of those costs because it, that that threshold couldn't be met. So we have identified, and we also have the current uh, terminal integration project again, where that, that threshold couldn't be met. So we came up with um, the first phase of a, a long-term plan here 
to uh, address um, um, those costs and also improving the entrance uh, from um, Wilson Road and the airport drive as our first phase, where we'll in, it'll entail the, the cost from the, the additional costs or overrunning costs from the terminal integration project and the, the hotel and beyond that in this phase one. So from that, I'll turn it over to Carolyn and 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 um, and Keith to do a description and and you know we're ready for to uh, we responded fully um, we received comments um, late last Wednesday and we responded fully in writing to those comments um, to staff um, um, by Friday so that we have responded and we're ready to respond further tonight and we've had f further discussion with Marla on, on the current project along with the other projects. So, Carolyn or Keith? Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, thanks for the opportunity to present tonight. Um, could we maybe pull up, um, let's see, which one is that? Page 10, which shows a visual of what the plan looks like. <clears throat> yep. Um, so the design team worked to create um, an iconic landmark at the corner of Williston Road and Airport, Airport Drive um, that we hope would truly create a gateway onto the airport campus. Um, the main features of this design are um, three, Vermont, the Vermont granite block walls that you can see in this photo, um, the native birch groves behind, and the BTV letters that you see. Um, these features build on the concepts that we established in the master plan. <clears throat> um, the letters are meant to be a modern sculpture with a nod toward the um, aeronautical world, um, and they're intended to as an interpretation of an airplane fuselage and are to be fabricated um, out of aluminum with um, metal rivets. I don't know if you can see the rivets, but they, they do show up on a closer, um, closer photo. Um, uh, the letters are positioned behind the Vermont granite block walls, and they're surrounded by the native birch groves. And, and then we have planting beds that sweep around the walls and under the letters and the native birch. Um, and they create sort of a natural carpet of fern and uh, low ornamental grasses. Um, and then there's a uh, red twig dogwood to sort of emerge behind the letters and in and around the trees um, that will add winter interest. <clears throat> So the overall intent is to create a unified composition of those three main elements and that the sculptural letters in form, size, and orientation will become a recognizable monument to the airport and its culture. Um, I'll also add that, you know, we are doing some grading there that will vastly improve the looks of the entrance off of uh, Wilson Road. <laughs> So that's pretty much it. Thank you for that overview, Carolyn. So I have a question to start with. Um, there are currently some like granite small walls. Those are different than what you're proposing here. Uh, yeah, those are, I don't think they're granite, but they are, those are gonna be removed. Okay, all right. Okay, I see them, yeah, okay. And uh, it seems like the main concern in the staff report is the letters and whether it's um, actually sculpture or a sign. So I think we need to have some conversation about that. Yes. Um, yeah, so Don, if I could introduce that subject, please. Sure. Um, a, this is a sign. There is no question that this is a sign. Um, it is a advertisement for what is the business on the site. Um, if it were, it could be a sculpture and not be a sign, but as um, advertisement for what the products are sold on the site or what business has happened on the site, um, it is a sign. You know, if they were to switch it, it doesn't, letters don't make a sign. If it said like, hello, or like smile or something, it could be considered a sculpture, but because it's related to the business, it is a sign and must be prohibited as such. Um, so the questions here are three. In the original, con in the original approval, um, NS-2001, the applicant had <clears throat> said that they were going to present a sculpture. They could switch it to a sculpture. They could switch it to, you know, hello or smile, which would be kind of silly. Or they could do like an airplane or, you know, something airport related. I don't know, not an artist. Um, so that's an option. They could do a sign, 
and make it meet our sign ordinance, which has a maximum size, um, you know, certain requirements, they would do that. They could um, both. Or the final option would be to go through the process to request the planning commission modify the sign ordinance to allow what they have proposed. Um, that's a much longer process, and I wouldn't recommend that like a short-term solution to getting them an offset project for their proposed um, internal expansion hotel. But that is sort of an option that they can pursue later if they want. Um. Uh, as the applicant, uh, we're we're proposed. Uh, we we're prepared to propose and just for tonight and remove the letters and come back with a, a sculpture or, or or revised signage that meets the requirements. Um, we believe even without the letters, this is a vast improvement and will meet uh, the intent of our um, overall um, landscaping plan. Um, we also, as you're aware, we're waiting for the decision, as Marla alluded to, the on the terminal integration project. And, it, and our understanding is that there may be a condition with respect to the zoning permit on this and the zoning permit on that. So obviously any delay is gonna be very costly for us. So we are prepared to make to remove the letters. And then again, this will be a vast improvement to this area and come back separately. I have a question. Are the letters, is the sign as it's portrayed here, inconsistent with the city's requirement for signs? They yes. are, yeah. They're too big. Yes, too big. Okay. We, we did do the calculation and we could um, modify them, but I believe bring them down about six inches and they, we believe they would meet that requirement. Okay. Okay. We'd have to recalculate that. Okay, so board, board, are we set to um, say that we've had sufficient discussion about this issue before we take public comment? Hi, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead, Dan. Is there a reason the sign doesn't say Burlington International Airport? Is there um, only because we wanted it to be a sculptural element similar to the one you'd see at LAX. Um, more of a sort of a bold graphic sculpture and then the fuselage that was the only reason we we didn't want it to be this uh, <clears throat> very traditional and parochial you know sign on a wall that and um, if you from a navigational standpoint BTV it's actually KBTV are the uh, facility identifier for for aviation of uh, Lake Carolyn is KTLT that's where the BTV comes from so and that's why we're looking to make it more of a sculpture than a sign but we understand that and are willing to pull those letters uh, for tonight. Yeah, you know, I, I get that, and I, and I, I get the connection, and, and for people in the industry, I'm thinking of the general public. Right. Um, if if you live here, you know what BTV means. If you're a tourist or you're driving around, and you're looking for the airport, especially given Vermont's draconian signage laws. Uh, somebody coming on Williston Road, do they know? Do they know the airport? <laughs> I realize things are a lot easier these days now with phones, you know, but is there signage eastbound, westbound, or coming from Kennedy, coming from, from, uh, from Kennedy Drive, yeah, that's signs that say airport straight ahead. But if you're coming on Williston Road, either direction, is there any signage at all that indicates the airport is coming up? I believe there are small signs that should, that on the, the side uh, that do identify the airport coming up, yes. Yeah. There are the Agency of Transportation off-premises off, um, business directional signs. Yes. And there's an OB, there's a black OBDS somewhere that says airport? Uh, there There is along Kennedy, um, and I believe there's on, on um, westbound Williston. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, okay. I just wanted to comment sort of in line with what Dan was saying. Um, I find the giant BTV letters sort of misleading just in, I know it's the Burlington airport, but this is in the middle of South Burlington. 
Um, it just seems strange to me to advertise Burlington, Vermont in South Burlington without really specifying that it's the airport. Um, I think it's a little bit odd. Okay. Um, we, we can remove the letters um, and come back uh, with a modified signage or a sculpture um, if it would, you know, satisfy the, the board. Um, BTV is the indicator of the Burlington International Airport from a navigational standpoint. Right, but it's also the indicator of the city of Burlington, and this doesn't specify the airport. Um, so if you're not a local, I, I think that it's pretty misleading. I get where you're going with it. That's just my opinion. Any other comments from the board? Um, we'll take public comment, but it sounds like we're not going to close this hearing tonight, that we need to continue it. Um, am I reading that correctly, Marla? So um, I think that this is where, you know, we had very may be able to testify on whether they have sufficient landscaping budget with just straight up removing the sun and dealing with that at a later time um, to address their needs for the terminal and hotel. And and we do, um, and, and um, Carolyn can take you through that. The hotel was 39600 and the tip was $33,477.71. So Marley, you were breaking up. There's a lot of feedback in the background. You were breaking up. I'm, I'm not sure what you're um, advising us to do. Okay, I'll try again. Um, is this any better? Yes. Okay. Um, so Larry had suggested that they remove the sign from this proposal altogether and come back to you at another time with a sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, if, so they could potentially close tonight if the remaining elements of this project, A, you know, meet what the board considers to be an entry feature, and B, provide sufficient budget to address the deficit for the terminal project and the hotel project. Okay, applicant, what are your thoughts? Uh, Carolyn is going to explain that. And okay. So I, there's sort of two options we could go with. Um, the first would be to um, just go with a phase one that would be the, the walls, just the walls. Um, and that the cost for the walls is $35,400. Um, the tip the TIP budget that would be going towards this project, depending on what the board determines the conditions are, would be $33,477.71. Um, so there's a difference of um, basically $1,900 that the airport would be willing to fund that amount at this time to, in order to build the walls. Um, option B would be to, to um, call phase one, both the granite walls and the plantings. Um, which comes to a total cost of 57900 And then if we were to apply uh, the TIP money, the 33477 and the hotel money, um, which I had actually, when I wrote this to you, Marla, I had the wrong number. It's actually the hotel's $39,500. Um, that leaves... Um, let's see, an excess of $15,077 that could go towards phase two, which would be um, the sculpture, if and, that and makes also, sense. We, yeah, we also, two things, the um, hotel has asked for a continuance or an extension on their zoning permit application to May of 2022. Um, so th that shouldn't impact this at all. Um, um, that's it, yeah. So where do we go from here? We, we would like the hearing, obviously we like approval without the letters um, because our understanding is this is also tied to the TIP project, which 
is a significant undertaking if it gets pushed back is going to go into the winter and that's more into the winter than we, we wanted to so we are willing to take the letters out that's a significant improvement that we can build upon on that corner and um, move this project forward and it's consistent with uh, the um, you know overall landscaping plan that was uh, previously previously approved yeah. okay thank you Larry so, um, board members, is that um, is what Larry suggests acceptable? And Marla, does it meet your needs? Um, it does. It yes. It's a, it's a question for the board. I don't have any um, concerns about what they're proposing, as long as the board feels like the proposal without the sculpture is still an entrance feature. Yeah, I'm, I'll speak up. I'm I'm okay with with that proposal, and and I guess it. Uh, speaking of this is a this is a true and literal gateway. Um, mm -hmm. it, fortunately, it didn't say Sobu on it because then I would have walked away. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, but but uh, <laughs> but it, it does make me wonder about. Yeah, the, I, it's great. It's great you're doing that work at the corner. That's sort of a you don't even know, you know, it's it's kind of dumpy looking there, as you well know, yeah. right? And uh, as a, <laughs> definitely an improvement. And uh, but I would encourage you to, you know, talk to talk to others in the city or other people doing design work around there, and you know, come up with uh, you know some some other ways to make it more of a gateway feature. And and, and maybe it's yeah. Maybe, obviously something better something better than a wooden sign but but some sort of announcing its presence is a great idea um we're we're committed to that just like we were with all the effort and time that went into coming up with the the, the you know the long-term landscaping plan so we're we'll work this until we get full approval for the, all this but okay in the interim we really need approval actually thank you thank you okay um I would like to entertain a motion to close uh, site plan uh, 23020 or 21. Did you take public zero. comments? Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any public comment about this proposal? Thank you, Delilah. Anyone want to offer some comments? I make a motion that we close site plan application SB 21020. Thank you, Mark. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Um, opposed? No? So um, we have closed the hearing. Thank you all for coming tonight and um, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our last application tonight is Sketch Plan SD 2116 of Beta Air Incorporated to amend an approved plan for an airport complex. The amendment, <clears throat> pardon me, consists of demolishing two existing buildings totaling 9,029 square feet, boundary lines between five existing lots for the purpose of constructing a 41 foot high, approximately 265,000 gross square feet office and manufacturing building and related site improvements at 3, 3070 Williston Road. So uh, this is a sketch plan. For those of you who aren't familiar with this, this is kind of a high, this is a first step, high level overview of the project, which gives the applicant an opportunity to get some feedback from the board and from staff and um, get some idea of of where our thinking might be going relative to this project. So um, let's, are there any recusals or disclosures to announce? Hang on, this is Stephanie, I need to recuse from this project. Okay, thanks Stephanie. Um, who's here for the applicant? Good evening everybody, I'm Katie Clark with Data right, Tech. Joel. Oh, hey Joel. Katie Hi. and Joel. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Joel Page with Scott and Partners Architects. 
<laughs> we have Art Klugo here as well, and Chris Gendron with Stand Tech, um, and Gregor Macefield with Studio 3 Architecture. Good evening. And Larry Lackey from the uh, owner. Hi, Larry. Can you say Greg's last name again? Gregor Macefield. This is a sketch plan, so there's no need to swear people in. So applicant, I would ask you to give us a very brief overview of the project. Please. Okay. Who would like to do that? I'm going to, well, so we're, Art, we're, we're, do you want to? Hi, this is Art Klugo with uh, the applicant, with Beta. Marla, are you able to bring up the uh, short slide deck that we had sent um, earlier today? Just a quick overview. Sure, so Delilah runs the presentation. Um, and we can pull that up for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's what we're looking for. It's really helpful. Marla, it's what they're looking for in supplemental. Sorry. If I could suggest also when a lot of mics are open is when we get feedback. So if you are not directly answering or speaking, please mute yourself because it does create feedback. Good um, suggestion. Okay, so uh, let me go into supplemental and open the item that you... Uh, beta. Okay. There you go. Oh, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so just just for reference, um, and maybe maybe the next slide. That would be great. So for those of you who are unaware of what we're doing here, we are building zero operational emissions aircraft and um, a charging network that will eventually span across the country. Um, right now we're doing it right here in Burlington, Vermont. We have grown um, rapidly in the last year. We have about 270 employees. Um, and um, if we're successful, um, we'll potentially double that number um, with our manufacturing facility that we'll need to obviously construct more aircraft. Um, right now we're right, we're, we're headquartered at the Burlington International Airport um, in what folks refer to as the North Hangar right next to the main terminal. Um, and um, our first mission will be organ delivery. Um, we were founded in 2017 with support from United Therapeutics. Um, Martine Rothblatt, their CEO and founder, was looking for a more sustainable way to deliver um, organs. And um, we were, were hoping to fill that gap and also um, fly cargo missions and eventually fly people as well. Um, the next slide shows um, our charging network and um, the projects that were currently um, targeted, that are currently targeted and permitted, um, some of them that are completed. Um, our aircraft flies about 250 nautical miles between charging and um, you can see down here in the left hand corner um, the most simplified method for charging, which looks like a car charger. It can actually charge um, vehicles as well, electric cars. And um, up at the top shows our charging um, pad that's located right here at the airport, um, which has crew quarters and a control center. Um, folks like Martine will use it to, um, um, to, to house pilots and um, you know, keep keep a staff on call for those critical missions when they are delivering human organs. Um, let's see, that's all I have. So, um, Marla, um, you can um, take it away, please. Not here, let me grab. Or Art. Yeah, let me grab that. Yeah. Marla. So, um, yeah. Marla, what so we thought we would do is either um, Marla or Ch Madam Chair. Hi, this is Art Klugo with Beta. And uh, picking up where Katie just uh, took us, 
The whole goal tonight is to give you a little bit about beta, talk a little bit about the manufacturing plant, and go through staff's comments. And we'd like to turn it over to Madam Chair to go through staff's comments, and we have some additional graphics for each one of those comments as we get there. Okay. Let's start with the comments. The first one, uh, staff notes the applicant has not made a specific proposal for the area within the project area to the rear of the proposed building. This area is a historic quarry and is lower than the surrounding grade. Staff recommends the board ask the applicant to describe the proposed use of that area. Great. And so I can take that one. Can everyone hear me okay? You're a little muffled, but go ahead, tr give it a try. So that, that area, um, mute me, or, or, or. It's the owl, isn't it? Sorry, we're just working through some technical difficulties, but uh, so just to describe that area, it's called behind the building or east of the site. Um, that area is actually considered a runway protection zone. Um, we actually avoided it on purpose because that area restricts development um, for such uses as buildings and parking lots, uh, basically to protect the public from an aircraft that may undershoot or overshoot the airway or the, uh, the runway. So. That area is limited by the FAA for any public development, which is which is the one reason why we didn't go in that area. Uh, there is still some opportunity to potentially do stormwater treatment in that area, and we're still evaluating that. Um, one other thing we should you should know about the site on that side is that the uh, if you can see the runway in that graphic that Delilah has up, uh, there's a there's approach cones uh, that limit the height of the building um, and that that as an aircraft comes in there needs to be a clear area below that aircraft as it comes in and we can't impact we can't be within that when we when we look at that cone the height of our building is restricted by that uh, elevation of that cone as we approach and we've done a preliminary analysis to establish a max building height and location based on that cone and we've submitted an application to the FAA to further uh, confirm our preliminary assessment. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead, Marla. So, Chris, what is the height that you believe you can construct in that zone? It's, it's hard to determine an exact height because you, the, the building, the finished floor can change. Uh, but right now, where the the manufacturing crew needs around 59 to 60 feet to do the operations that they need. And you think that that's you're proposing? This is our to pick up on what Chris just said. There, the average the building height was calculated at 41 feet high based on the land development requirement to use the average grade around the building. Now, because the site slopes 20 feet from the front to the back, the height of the building on the runway side will be closer to 60 feet. The height of the building on the Williston Road side or the office side will be closer to the 41 feet, uh, probably a little bit less as we described in the application. Does that help you, Marla? Yeah, that was a more, that was more, what did you call it, a Columbo question? I knew the answer already. I just thought the board might be interested. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so have we addressed number one, board? Historic quarry, sir, the proposed use of that area. Okay, let's move on to two. Uh, Recommends board discuss the project design and gateway vision with the applicant. The board may wish to have this discussion in conjunction with the site plan parking placement standards below. Applicant, what are your thoughts about that? Applicant, 
Applicant number two. Yes, so for item number two, if we could go back to the opening presentation, we have a couple of slides that we would just like to talk through to um, work through this particular item. Uh, we want to look at uh, slide number 10 and slide number 11, which are noted as staff note number two. There we go. So in, in terms of what the gateway or the, the entry might look like, we have two images here. One in the lower right-hand corner, which is the existing condition as you were driving east on Williston Road, you would pass the existing landscape supply shop and then you would move towards Pete's RV. And you can see that it's a, a fairly urban and uh, somewhat commercial stretch of the road there. What we're proposing is a much more campus-like feel, as you see in the perspective, which integrates a series of landscape features in front of the site as you, that you would pass through as you enter the site, including landscape walls, plantings. You can see that there's connections to the rec paths there, um, both uh, along Williston Road and into our site that will again, develop this campus feel that we're looking for. As you look at the proposed sketch there, you can see in the background, very low on the horizon, the building, it's a, it's a bit of a the white wall and, and right where Marla's dot is at there. Um, the building sets back fairly significantly from Williston Road. And so what you're gonna see up front as you pass through is this fantastically landscaped uh, new amenity along the uh, the travel path there. If we go to the next slide, here's a sampling of the type of elements that will be incorporated into this uh, new entry. We'll have the, the native birch groves, we'll have uh, rock and, and landscape walls. They may also be core 10 to match some of the existing architecture that's here at the North Hangar and that the uh, Development Review Board has seen for previous applications that we've made for the North Hangar. And then a nice little vignette there of what a walking path might be as we start to come through the campus and develop this campus plan. These images that you see here are consistent with the master plan that was developed for the airport, and we look to use those, leverage those, and expand those as we develop the, the campus and the gateway here for um, our new manufacturing and office plant. Thank you. Any questions from the board about this? It's a beautiful stone wall. Um, number staff comment number three staff recommends the board ask the applicant to address the comment during the sketch plan meeting and the comment was in relation to bike path access which you just addressed um, very commercial I think you've addressed that does any does a board member have any um, other questions about that staff comment before we move on, okay. Uh, comment number four, given the scale of the project, staff considers there's a reasonable nexus for the board to require the applicant to install sidewalk along the north side of Williston Road between the two proposed entrances. I think you just addressed that. Uh, it yes. sounds like that's a yes. Absolutely, okay. yes, definitely. Okay. okay, board, any questions, comments? Okay. Uh, number three, I, I'm sorry, five, staff supports these recommendations um, about the traffic study, recommends the board require a traffic study to accompany the next application for the project. Staff further recommends the board's activity um, to authorize a technical review of the traffic study so that both the study and the technical review can be presented at the first hearing for the next application. So I actually have a question about this. Marla, what is the difference between um, a traffic study and a technical review of the traffic study? Sure, um, and I'm just gonna give one sentence of introduction. Um, in our initial pre-application meeting with the applicant, they said that their um, initial like super 10,000 foot estimate is that they would anticipate um, an additional 200 p.m. peak hour trip ends. So though that number is 
could vary by an order of magnitude, not an order of magnitude, but by, by you know, 100% either direction. Um, that's why we're recommending a traffic study. Um, a traffic study is prepared by the applicant. A traffic third part, independent third party technical review of the traffic study is when an independent third party reviews the traffic study and tells us whether it's good or has flaws or um, you know could be improved in certain ways. Great. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks. So, um, applicant, what are your thoughts about the traffic study? Are you prepared to do that? Applicant? Art, you're muted. No, I'm not. No, Art is muted. Oh, Art. Art? Applicant, I'm sorry, can you hear me, you? Madam Chair? We can now, we can now. Yep, yeah, okay, great, sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to say before Chris jumps in and talks through the details on the uh, staff comments here that as the applicant is in complete agreement with um, staff's recommendation to pursue um, in um, ah, what is it called again? <laughs> um, Yes, technical review, thank you. Stumbled on my words there. Uh, we do believe that given the, the size of the project, given the complexity of the project, the integration that'll happen with the regional transportation plan, that it's always good to have a second set of eyes on this. You know, certainly Stantec and VHB are doing a great job on our behalf, but in terms of making sure that we're all looking at the same thing, we're completely behind the, the idea of, uh, of a technical review for the traffic piece. And with that, I'll turn it over to Chris and let him uh, talk through the details. But, but if I may, you're committed to do the traffic study. Uh, we are, and as Chris will share in, in just a minute, we're fairly far along. We received the second draft of the traffic study uh, today, and we need to uh, review that and anticipate being able to submit the traffic study sometime over the next week or so once we get a chance to review it re and have our team respond to any comments that we may have. Great, great. Was somebody else going to say something on your team? Okay. Board, any comments? No, just that, uh, no, I just that I'll make a motion that we invoke technical review of the traffic study when it comes in. Okay. Anyone want to second that? I'll second. This is Jim. Do we need to vote on this, Marla? Yes. Okay. All in favor of invoking a technical review? Technical review of the traffic study, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Sounds like we're good with that. Okay. Um, number six, staff recommends the board direct the applicant to submit field delineations and wetland reports as well as probably documentation from the state wetlands program supporting the delineation as part of the next application. Is that acceptable to you, applicant? I'm sorry, you're muted. I can't hear you. Who's speaking for the applicant, please? Who, who's speaking for the applicant? Go ahead and pause, Chris. Chris, Chris. This is Chris Gendron um, speaking for the applicant. We delineated the wetlands recently and we're scheduled to meet with the uh, to meet with the, the wetland ecologists later this month. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Any questions from the board about that? Okay. Um, number seven. Staff recommends the board discuss with the applicant whether they believe they will be able to adjust their proposal to meet the requirements for the above discussed exception to parking being prohibited in front. If they cannot, staff considers the other potential exceptions only allow a limited amount of the desired parking to the front and therefore would require a significant redesign of the project. Applicant, what are your thoughts about this? Can I introduce this one, Don? Sure, please do. Um, sorry, guys. So, as the board probably remembers, there are three things the board has no authority to waive, and one of them is parking in the front. 
However, there are prescribed exceptions to parking in the front. And one of those exceptions um, that is available in this zoning district is if the applicant creates a, um, what was the term? A um, significant green space to create a campus style quad um, where the park, it sort of goes street, parking, building, quad, building, parking, street. So it's like a, it's like a parking park. <laughs> so the idea is, the idea is that the quad is in the center, then there's buildings, then there's parking, and then there's the street. Um, so this exception may be available to this applicant, but the restrictions on that exception are extremely tight. Um, and sort of in the staff comments before staff comment number six, all of those restrictions are enumerated. And so if they wish to pursue the parking as they have shown, they have a pretty high bar to do so. Um, and so that's sort of where I, where I would leave it and let them say how they, how or whether they think that this is going to work for them. Great, thank you for that introduction, Marla. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. Okay, Please. I looked like you were gonna say something, so it's just, you're- Okay, sorry. go ahead. So um, if, if it is okay with the chair, we would actually like to talk through items seven and eight concurrently, and sure. we're gonna just do an overview of the site plan and how we build up to where we're at. So we've got mm -hmm. some slides that we'll talk through, and we're gonna have our architect, uh, Joel Page, take us through that, and then when we get to the actual parking piece, I'll um, step back in. So Joel. Great, thank you, Art. Good evening, everybody. Um, would it be able, would possible to go back to, I think it was slide, that's the one right there. Um, so I think this gives us a good overview of the site in general, as well as the campus, uh, which encompasses the, the future campus for beta, which encompasses everything inside the red line. Uh, starting from the far back of the shot, there's a, a uh, aircraft sort of parking area that's wrapped by an L, that will potentially be the future cultural center for Beta. And then working our way closer down the sheet, uh, where you see the big tan area, which is the um, quarry that we're going to be working in, um, imagine in that space going from a desert, basically, this underutilized piece of land, to a modern net zero manufacturing facility that ties into the landscape and hugs the corners of the landscape and becomes one with the landscape. All those beautiful RVs will end up going somewhere else. There'll be a beautiful green new pathway and parking leading up to the, the entrance to the production facility. Um, I think it's important that we describe kind of the work that's going to go on there. So this is a manufacturing facility as well as Beta's future headquarters. So it'll be a, a large building uh, housing a lot of unique work that's being done, including the manufacture of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, which in itself is a totally unique uh, entity. Um, the building that's behind the first rectangle you see is Continental Hangar. I'll point out a few key features which will come into play in the next few sides. slides. There's Mirabelle's, which is the rectangular building closer to Williston Road at the far end of that red line. And then on the close end of the shot are, is a rock outcropping, which plays into our landscape design. So we could go to the, the next slide. Here, um, you'll see pretty lightly are some purple lines um, in the middle of the shot. Those are uh, takeoff and landing departure three-dimensional planes that we have to work around to fit this building into the site. So that in the areas northeast of the purple lines are basically where we cannot develop. Uh, the big dark building in the middle of the shot is the continental hangar, and that can be a landmark for how we orient ourselves on the site. Uh, go ahead and go to the next uh, shot. So you've seen a couple of site plan layouts, and they're really the culmination of an evolution of our design process. 
and um, starting with the design on the left, as we've learned more and more about the manufacturing process, we've also learned that we really need to maximize our footprint area. And to do that, it takes the building, and we have to be 60 feet away from the Continental Hangar, which was that dark rectangular building you saw previously in the middle of the shot. So to get the building size we need, that pushes us further to the south, which ends up coming closer to the unique rock outcropping that is, which I don't have a marker, uh, to the sort of bottom-ish left, right of the, the building shown. Um, there will also be, and then as we've progressed with the design of the site, we've also are trying to create an interesting procession from Williston Road up to the building. And hey, so, the bu yes. If someone on your team um, wants to use a pointer, there are annotation tools to point out things you're. Um, okay, describing. how do I find those? I would like to do that, but I haven't found them. Yeah, there's something that looks like a paintbrush with a little arrow next to it. Really? Or a little ribbon above your go to meeting that says, um, trying to, yeah. I do not see anything like that. You're I the second see, person to say that tonight. That I see different. people, chat, settings, and some no, dots. It's a separate bar that shows up when you hover over the presentation part of the screen. Oh. Okay. Sometimes if you move your cursor to the right of the screen, it it becomes visible. It has a little camera at the top, top and then a oh. plus and a minus. Let me try going to, uh, I don't want to hit the wrong button and lose you all. Well, if someone else on your team knows what you're talking about and has the tools, they could do it too. Yeah, does anybody see it on their screen? I'm not part of the presentation, but I see it on my screen if you'd like me to point. Um, yeah, I would go to the right image. Actually, it's going to be kind of awkward. Um, well, the basic gist of it is, is we're we're evolving as we learn more about how the production is going to work, and, and as we're focusing on how we're designing the building and and the key features we want to have. And as the building sits on the site, some of the net zero features we want to emphasize, and you'll see in some of the future slides, are um, we will have solar panels on the roof. We're going to have um, Skylights, uh, geo, we're looking into geothermal heating and cooling. Uh, so, and also site features as we do the plantings, uh, trying to work with native species and, and, and manage those with you know, low water, not needing a lot of water and everything. So the area in yellow you see there is a rock outcropping, which when we get to further descriptions of the building, you'll see it creates a unique uh, gully which is a, a, like a natural amphitheater that folks can sit in and it will become part of our entry possession into the building and also tying in how the public accesses the site. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, here we're, we're, is the next iteration of the plan. The building unfortunately isn't in color yet, um, but what you can see on the site are walkways that connect um, all the way over to Aviation Drive, sort of along that um, the area south of the building. Yeah, there's Aviation Drive, and then there's a gray line that's a walkway. We'll have other walkways that will work through the site. We're looking at a boardwalk along the wet area potentially to engage you to the wildlife that's there, and then to the the eastern edge of the building, which is sort of the bottom corner of the building, we're maximizing the features, the rock features there, the cliffs, and putting in pathways, sitting areas. And what we have discovered uh, walking around the site, which you wouldn't expect, is there are unique views to the Green Mountains. Yeah. You can see... Um, and to the north, as well as to the airport. So part of our building design wants to take advantage of that. So you, it grounds you in the site, and it also gives you a great visual of what's happening at the yeah. airport. And that will be open to, on the on the on the outside of the building side, to the public, um, as well as to uh, beta employees. Um, and we can go to the next uh, slide. 
I think, oh, yeah, that one. So in order for us to, and I'll let Art probably take this over because he's more versed in that, we have some options to try to mitigate or to, to find solutions to the parking dilemma. Or um, parking challenge, less about a dilemma, more about a challenge. Um, as as uh, Joel True. said, we're learning more every day about this project. We, uh, um, we're working fast and we've been um, very thankful for all the support that we've had from staff to date, from uh, the various state folks that we've talked to and, and help us get to this point. It's been a collaborative process today and it'll continue to be a collaborative process as we go forward. So what you see here in the numbers, number one, a public park, number two, a commercial building, and number three, an entry drive, these relate directly to the staff report where uh, let me just open up those pages on uh, page six of eight on the staff report under parking. And they were identified these potential solutions to the challenge that we have with our building. And that is that the, the back of our building is actually the front of our building on the airport because we're producing airplanes and we need to roll them out the back. So it's, it's very challenging to put cars in the back as you might expect, as well as trying to work through that with any FAA guidelines that may say, you know, you, if it's a vehicle on the tarmac, then it has to go through certain clearances and, and be um, certified. And, and Larry can speak definitely better to that than I can. But Suffice it to say that we've identified really the front of the building as it's defined by the land development regulations as really the only place to put parking. And so in order to comply with the land development regulations, we're working through this very, these various components. Um, option one was to put a, a public park in as defined um, by, by Marla, and I believe it has to be about 150,000 square feet. The other option is to put a commercial building along Williston Road of a size that would meet the land development regulations, thus having the parking behind that commercial building in number two. And then number three would be to reorient the entry drive in a way that you, we, you try to um, adjust where the front of that building may be so more of the parking would technically be on, on the side. Uh, the staff comments were great. We, we're working through those right now. Uh, we don't have a final solution yet. Again, this will be collaborative. We anticipate working with a whole host of folks to come up with the right solution, but we're open to um, really numbers one and two. Number three, I'm not sure that we could actually get the drive in a place that would make it work with the land development regulations. So we're gonna focus our efforts on, on one and two. And when we come back with our preliminary and final, you'll see either uh, a solution that has the public park um, or a solution that has a commercial building and quite possibly one that has a mixture of both because as um, was stated earlier, up by number one, we are looking at developing a cultural center almost currently with the manufacturing center and part of this cultural center and bringing people in to experience aviation, it only makes sense to have a park component to that. Since one of the things that's really great to do is to sit outside and watch the airplanes come and go. And it, it's a much different experience from the outside than it is from the inside. So again, when we come back, um, we don't have a, a firm date yet on preliminary and, and final when we come back to the board but it will incorporate some version of items number numbers one and two to respond to staff's comments. Thank you, thank you. Any questions from the board before we look at the last staff comments? So this is where I think the board can really provide some benefit to the applicant by, um, you know, a sketch plan is for the benefit of the applicant to hear whether they're on the right track. Um, so, you know, it, this is a little bit subtle and the board doesn't see this very often, but how is the board feeling about, you know, either any of these three ways to crack the parking nut? Don, may I weigh in on this? I, I, I was hoping you would, thank you, Mark. Sure, I mean, I think that, um, especially given the development on Williston Road, you know, I suspect you're gonna end up with, you know, more leaning towards the commercial building to block the parking. And then it would also lend itself to some some further development for the, park, for the 
for the parcel, um, I would have loved to have seen a public park, you know, and really create this as a, like a gateway entry into this future sort of tech park, you know, this sort of semi-enclosed tech park in the airport, um, you know, leading in, you know, our parking standards are challenging, you know, with the no parking in the front, especially given your site conditions you have to work with. And as you aptly described, you know, the rear of the building is the front of your building because of the way the manufacturing works and the way the site is laid out. You know, you kind of are set back from the street um, to provide access to the runway and the airport facilities. And therefore, you know, you sort of are left with the front of it for your parking, which goes against the regulations. So, um, I think that I would love, I don't, I, I agree with you. I don't see a number three lean, you know, leaning towards being able to solve it with number three, your entry drive. I think you're going to end up with a, a mix of one and two. And I'm, I am interesting to see how you would sort of do solve it. Um, Cause I think you have a great opportunity to, to put some sort of commercial building or couple small buildings, you know, on, on Williston road to maintain that sort of, pattern language on Williston Road, then screen your parking in the rear from, with those. Good comment. Other comments by the board? Thank you for that, Mark. Other comments before we move on? I, I have a question. What is the cultural center? I love the, I, I love the um, thought of that, but I don't know what it is. Is it kind of like a museum or a simulation or what, what is that about? How about all of the above? And, and it is lovingly referred to here at Beta as the Center for Awesomeness and, and all things aviation. It really is intended to provide a spark to those that have some interest in aviation and, and bring them in. And even those that maybe are curious about what it is and don't have that same spark may wander in and, and take a look at it, but it's going to include simulation. It's going to include uh, training for our pilots and, and potentially even some, some alliances and some synergies with some local businesses that we're talking to right now. One of the curious things about the airline industry and, and what we're doing here at Beta is that by the year 2030, we're going to need to train 10,000 pilots. Now, some of those are going to be pilots that already have pilot license and they'll be you know, certified on a either our aircraft or similar aircraft, um, some of those will be new trainings. And there's going to be many places where that's going to happen, but one of the key places could be here on property. Uh, as part of the cultural center, there'll be some hangar space for some general aviation. So it'll be not just um, Aaliyah, but if you've been out to the airport recently and some of the seen some of the really cool small planes that are floating around that are part of the beta fleet, those will become part of that cultural center. There could be a restaurant out there. There could be a cafe out there. There could be a whole host of things that center around this idea of aviation, STEM education as another way to reach out to the community, bring the schools and give them an opportunity to have some hands-on experience in this space. It is really intended to be as broad and as forward-thinking as we can possibly make it. Sounds very interesting. Sounds wonderful. All right. I'm looking at the time and um, let's take the last comment, number nine. Um, and this is about the aesthetics of the building. Um, <clears throat> we don't have any details about that. Staff recommends uh, that we have a discussion with you about how you want to create a desirable transition from structure to site in light of the parking considerations. We've talked about that a little bit. Um, and then staff has some suggestions about what you should consider when you come back to us for preliminary plat. Um, do you have any comments about this? And, and then I'll turn to the board. Uh, we, we do. We have uh, the, the last three slides in this slide deck. We'll start to walk through this. Going to turn it over actually to Gregor Macefield, one of our architects on this project, to uh, talk us through this. Hi, everybody. Um, so what you're looking at right now, the lower image, is actually the image that you would have as you approached, um, as Joel described in the site plan, the arrival uh, through the gateway uh, perhaps we call this aviation park instead of tech park. But as you come in through that gateway, the alley 
uh, it bends to the northeast, revealing the building gradually as you arrive. So uh, in, on this bottom sketch here, what you're seeing is on the right-hand side, uh, the actual arrival and the turnaround. And then as you um, move toward the left-hand side, headed toward the Continental Hangar or the Cultural Center, is the um, shipping and receiving side. And both of these elements that you're looking at are actual arrivals. One is um, a more immediate arrival if you happen to be working on the floor or with uh, inventory and shipping. And the other on the right-hand side <clears throat> is actually the arrival to the main administrative and um, supplemental spaces. So moving to the image just above it, you can see it's a, it's a slight blow up of, of that arrival point. And um, what you're looking at in this image is a, a, a rather sculptural um, cutout of a wall of corten fins, sheets of steel that um, extend 20 feet from the parapet to the slab. And inside this outdoor pavilion <clears throat> is a two-story window wall that's open to the public that provides a view, your first view, into the manufacturing center um, where, you know, arguably the 21st century revolution of carbon footprint free flight is being produced. Um, what you're also seeing here just outside of this thinned entryway is a walkway through a landscape um, version of the terrain that exists up to a second floor area, which is actually um, the continuation of this path takes you into what we're kind of referring to as the Great Lawn or the Beta Valley, which would um, be seen best on the next slide. So now you're looking at two different bird's eye views, one from the northeast and the other from the southeast. So the walkway that I just described is on the southeast. Um, you can see the cutaway for the main entry, but the path would move toward your right up to the second floor. And through this portal, there's sort of a terrace with um, amphitheater staircase that goes down into the valley. So what we're doing here, given our tight site constraints and the nature of a repurposed quarry is we're looking at using the landscape feature of the unmined cliff as it exists. And in most cases, we're excavating it down even further to expose more of the cliff. And that area becomes a, a nature scape for both the public that might come to outdoor seating areas that overlook the arrival and departure of planes, as well as um, the Alia finished aircraft that comes out onto the apron that you can see. Um, moving to the upper left-hand view, this, this is the bird's eye from the northeast. Now you're looking at this valley from the other end, and the bar of building that you're seeing um, running from the upper left to the lower right is this amenity administrative support wing of the building. And then the larger volume that you're looking at is the actual manufacturing area. Um, the black band, which you'll see in um, future presentations, is actually the hangar doors that open to allow the finished aircraft to come out. And then this texture that you're seeing up on the roof is the photovoltaic array that we're hoping to have. Um, interspersed with skylights for natural lighting. So really quickly, and, and I think it's been mentioned quite a bit already, um, sustainability is actually one of the core principles in Beta's mission to produce an aircraft that has zero carbon footprint is going to be a game changer for the aviation world. The cost of running an electric Aircraft is one-fifth the cost of running your typical fossil fuel 
um, aircraft. And, you know, that's only um, one small piece of the sustainability principles that Beta embraces. And, you know, because they've got such a green um, attitude and response and ethic and stewardship toward the environment, this building is likewise looking to do a lot of what their aircraft is doing. So the parking lots that you've seen previously, uh, we're looking at, uh, we're studying the idea right now of installing geothermal heat pumps to provide the heating and the cooling for this building. As you can see, the PV array on the roof is an effort to offset our power consumption to hopefully make this building a net zero building. That's accompanied by a super high performance envelope, meaning that the walls and the roof and under the slab are all high performance super insulated. And the mechanical systems of this building will all be electric, electric being your primary renewable energy source. So. As you can see, the, the effort is um, pretty intense to make a non-carbon consumptive footprint to go with hopefully a net zero or an extremely low energy building. And on this last slide, what you're seeing- um, hey, hey, Gregor, Gregor, real quick, can we just go back to, to that last slide? Just wanna point out two things for, for everybody, because we've mentioned this and it, there we go. So um, as you were to look out, and Gregor, correct me here, but as you look out over that rock ledge, that is where you get to take advantage of the mountain views and, and camel's hump. So it's not just about the views near, it's about the views far and trying to leverage as much of the Vermont beauty that we can. And then lastly, um, there are no fossil fuels being used to heat or cool this building, picking up on the sustainability piece that uh, Gregor just mentioned. And with that, Gregor, take us home on the uh, the last slide. Yeah, just to pick up on Art's point, because I did sort of miss it. If you could go back to that last slide, I just want to, uh, the one previous to this, as Art was saying, you can see the amenities building pokes out. And what's really happening is these two walls that face north are aimed directly at Camel's Hump. And then what's currently looking like our cafeteria, our dining facility, that is aimed at the, the, the cliff and the natural valley here. So yeah, we are really trying to make as much advantage of um, actually a surprising number of really attractive views. So with that, <laughs> we can finally go to the last slide. So Beta's looked to be in Burlington and has, as you know, several facilities without, throughout South Burlington and the Williston area. And um, we're, we're working to develop a language with these buildings that's more or less prototyped off of the North Hangar. And um, as you've seen and is now being constructed, um, the materials there, are a white insulated metal panel, black structural steel, and an accent of uh, Corten steel, which is a weathering steel. It rusts to a beautiful orange that responds incredibly to light and natural surroundings. And so this first level you're seeing here are ideas about how we might utilize the Corten steel in a thin type um, accent that you'll see in further developments of the building. The next level down, and you can also see it in the sketches that we presented, um, the one to the right in the middle band, those are the vertical Corten fins. Um, to the left of that are scales made out of a black, uh, out of a flat seam metal panel that may be white, they may be zinc or silver, um, or they may be more of the Corten. And then the last row on the bottom, um, you're looking at uh, a flat seam flush metal panel that has interspersed a standing metal seam to generate um, a, a variation in, in the facade of what could be the uh, manufacturing piece. And that's just kind of a real quick um, sketch, look-see at what we're thinking about for how this 
building may materialize itself and utilize a pretty unique site with some unexpected amenities in the views and, and landscape. Thank you, it's fascinating. We will, we will look forward to seeing more details at the, next, at the next application step. Board members, do you have any questions or comments based on Gregor's overview? Yeah, Don, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll weigh in and throw out my comments. Um, I think it's a great tie-in to sort of the, you know, the, the other building that they've done over, uh, that we've reviewed and approved. You know, there's some common elements. Um, you know, it's, it's clearly continues to be an exciting company and an exciting development to see happening in Vermont and South Burlington. Um, you know, I, I think it's great to see the growth. Uh, I think it's, you know, clearly it's responsible and it's forward thinking and it's, seems to be in line with their company vision. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope to work, clearly hope to work with them as they solve the, uh, the issues for this sketch plan as they move into preliminary and final um, and uh, sort of see some of their other solutions. I think it, you know, as Art has commented and some of the other team members comment, this thing is a, a very fast moving fluid project and I suspect that we'll see some changes in preliminary and final um, from what we're seeing now. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's it's good direction so far. Great, I, I couldn't agree more. Any other comments from the board? Marla, do you have any questions before we take public comment? I do not. Okay. It looks Dan, like did you, you, want to see you just say something? It looks like Dan's talk. Dan, can you hear me? We can't hear you. He's speaking, but we can't hear you, Dan. He had to log off early and log back in. I think he's been having issues. Okay, all right. Mar Marla, were you saying something? No, okay. All right. Um, let's see, we, uh, this is sketch, so we don't vote. I'm gonna get this eventually. We don't have to vote to conclude sketch, do we? Public comment. I know, I know we're gonna to get to that, but okay. um, do we vote to conclude sketch? No. No, okay. So are there any members of the public who would like to offer comments? Hi, John Wilking. Hi, John. Yeah, we just, um, as with my hat on as chair of the Economic Development Committee, uh, we encourage, uh, you to uh, go through your process and, and keep uh, beta moving along as best as possible. Uh, we, we think this is a, one of the, one in a, one of, uh, the very few economic development opportunities that we have seen of this size in the last 20 years and uh, are very encouraged by it. Thanks. Thanks for your comments. Any other public comments? Thanks for hanging in there till this late hour, John. Um, you thought when you got off the board, you, <laughs> you were free of that. Um, okay. Uh, so would someone like to make a motion to conclude this sketch plan hearing? We don't make a motion to yeah. conclude. Oh, we just do. We just conclude. We just did sign RSC. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so thank you, applicant, for being here. I'll get this yet, Mark. Um, yep. And um, we will see you back here soon when you're ready for your preliminary plat. Many thanks uh, from everyone here at Beta, and we look forward to working with uh, everyone uh, here uh, going forward. Thank you. Yes, we do too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, board, we have one more agenda item and that is to approve the May 26 minutes. Have you had a chance to look at those? I believe there were two, am I lying? I think there were two sets of minutes. There are two sets of minutes. But if you're not ready for one of them, that's fine. 
I did not see the June 1st. Did anyone else see the June 1st? Board yes. members, you did? Yeah, I did? Okay. Why don't you take it away then, Mark? All right, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the minutes from the May 26th and the June 1st DRB meetings as drafted. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair Boitza. Aye. So that concludes our meeting tonight. We will see you on July 6th at 5.30 outside of the, um, the barn on O'Brien Farm or Old Farm Road to do a site visit of that area. Good night, everyone.